and we are live what is going on everyone it's your boy johnny dunn and we are back with another one today epic vv live stream today we have the pilly fantasy the war of dragons now i think this one's going to be huge globally long term now short term it's going to be interesting to see how it does but once once these countries and different communities different cultures are able to read the vv app in their language i think this has a chance to explode and do really well long term shout out to the live stream everybody join the chat today I'm going to be going over the details real quick on this drop, then I'm going to go over the market prices. We have four drops today, four different rarities. One drop, I should say, four different rarities. We have the common. It's a blind box, $40 list price for all of them. The common has 11,888 additions. Big fan of the way the common looks today. I feel like that white and purple, the colors contrast each other really well. Then we have the uncommon, 8,888 additions today. Then the rare, 5,888 and the ultra rare. This, I think, is going to go crazy. 3,888 editions. Now, again, the VV app's not able to be read in different languages right now. So I think this is huge in a lot of cultures that just haven't even been able to read the VV app just yet. So I think, you know, David, you just talked about it in the last AMA on the Twitter spaces. If you guys haven't watched that, definitely go check out the last video I posted. A couple of videos ago, I recorded the AMA. David, you talked about how this is huge globally. And I think... Like I keep saying, once these different cultures come onto the VV app, being able to read it in different languages, these have a chance to do really, really well. So I'm going to hope to at least land one on the drop. You know, if I can get lucky, land an ultra rare or even just the common. I think the low mech commons will do really well just because of the artistic design. I think that may be the most popular color out of the bunch. Most popular looking one, I should say, based on the color. So if I'm going to try to at least get two of these, maybe three if I can land another one cheap, but maybe get one on the drop, get another one in the marketplace. That's kind of my game plan for this. I think we do have a lot of comics coming up next week. I forget who exactly talked about it. Maybe it was Alex in the AMA talked about we do have a few comics lined up next week. I think one's supposed to be pretty good, but I'm not too sure on the collectible drops that's happening next week. So maybe the market has time to recover. Maybe it has time to pump up a little bit again. We got dubs in the building. How are we doing, fam? We got Desk Cloud, Top Bubsy Morning, Morning JD. We, we ready for the dubs today. Absolutely. Let's go. We got Sleeping Comics. Let's go. Here to see the legend. My man, Sleeping Comics, appreciate you big time. Sleeping Comics is turning into a legend, though. Don't let him fool you guys. Sleeping Comics, make sure you guys tune in to Sleeping. You know, amazing YouTube channel, amazing website he's got over there he created. You know, if anybody wants to pick his mind with these comics, you know, an amazing person just to tap into his experience and everything he's learned. Yeah, Superman with the super chat. Let's go more than all. Let's go, he says. I think we have a chance to, you know, have the chat do really well again on this drop. Shout out to everybody who got one yesterday on that drop. It was great to see the chat doing really well. You know, it's, we have, we've got a lot of drops lately where you guys see me get the drop and everybody else struggling. So it's great to kind of see things flip a little bit. I think I'm on a little cold streak now. I think I'm 0 for 4 maybe. 0 for 5 maybe actually after last drop. I'm not too sure. But glad to see everybody in the chat get one. It's always a great feeling. John B. Bo, morning. Well, can we get some likes though? Is that how the youth says it? <laughs> Run the likes up for me. Appreciate y'all big time. Let's get this bread. Let's get it, sleeping. Let me know which one you like the best, Sleeping. Are you a fan of the common, the way it looks the most, or the ultra rare, or maybe one that I'm not the most, you know, biggest fan of, the uncommon, the rare maybe? I've seen a lot of people like the uncommon of this one. I'm going to bring it up and show you guys what they all look like before I go over to, into the marketplace. So we got the common here, the white and purple. Big fan of that. It's not focusing on that. All good, though. We got the uncommon right here. I like this one because it's actually got the fan there with some artwork on the fan. Now, I'm pretty sure a lot of different cultures are, you know, those fans are pretty popular with the artwork on them. I think that could do really well. Then we have the rare. Oh, didn't mean to click that. Sorry about that. We got the rare down here and then the ultra rare. Big fan. My, fa my two favorites are the common and the ultra rare. I think they'll all do well, though. I probably won't be able to complete this set. We have 55 minutes to the drop. Now, David Hughes also talked about how there will be a Series 2, a Series 3, a Series 4 of these, maybe even a Series 5. I'm not too sure, but there's going to be multiple series. Now, because of that, I think he also mentioned the owners of this company, they want to have this drop really, really limited. 
because I think in the physical world, these drops, you know, the amount of additions there are very, very limited. I think less than a thousand, less than maybe even a hundred possibly. I'm not sure on the exact number, but David, you insisted on this first drop because he thinks there will be a huge demand for these first appearances. I think these, that's the reason why they did make, you know, 10,000, 11,000 additions for these, because these are the first appearance. And like I said, once they release the series two, the series three, the series four, we're going to have people who collect all of these series. So I think we're kind of in a blessed spot right now. Even if they come out in the marketplace, not that expensive, we're in a blessed opportunity to kind of take advantage of this because we have the series one first appearance. Now it's always tough with Vivi because they release so many drops, right? So it's important to not let go of your entire gem bag, I think. But if you can keep some gems on the side for some future drops and be able to stack a couple of these, I think that could be a good, good, uh, good bet right there. Not financial advice, just kind of my thoughts on what I'm going to be doing. Morning, JD. Shout out to you, Rich J. We got Sam in the building. Pretty solid, pretty solid. Got an L yesterday. Bought a Wonder Woman from the market at 235. Hope for the best. Yeah, it's, I think it's about 270 right now. I was going to talk about the prices of Wonder Woman in just a moment. I did pick up two. I, I picked up a second one just to kind of flip. I'm not sure when I'm going to flip it. I wanted to hold out to about at least like 400, 500 bucks, but I was thinking about maybe flipping one a little earlier around like 300, you know, price. I'm not too sure yet, but I think it's an easy $500 collectible eventually. That's why I did pick one up. I picked up that second one to flip. So we'll see what happens. It does look amazing. <laughs> Slavin says he doesn't know anything about these guys. I'd be happy with a comment, but I think the ultra rare looks cool. I'm kind of feeling the same way, Sleep, and I, I like the aesthetics, the artwork of that common big time. I like the colorway of the white and purple. But, of course, that Ultra Rare, I think, will probably do the best right away. And I don't know too much about this drop either. Just the Ultra Rare and that comic kind of stood out to me as well. I went to TIE Fighter, Lee Wong says. Yeah, I think they're all going to do well. I like anyone that I can that I happen to hopefully get. Yeah, absolutely. I think anything that we land on the drop is going to turn into our favorite one of these. Hey, we got Rich J showing some love to sleeping. Smash the thumbs up for good luck. Definitely think that's, you know, the case that's been happening. Now, obviously, the thumbs up, thumbs up helps my channel grow big time, helps that algorithm. But... I think it also blesses the chat. We see every time that you guys run the likes up, you guys end up get lucky. So we'll see what happens. What's the big comic drop this week? So we don't know for sure, John, but they didn't give any details about what's, which comic is going to be dropping. They did say in the AMA, I believe, that a couple of comics will be dropping later in this week. And I think one of them is supposed to be a pretty good one. <laughs> Yesterday's demand must have been low because I got the drop. See, clockwise, I wouldn't say demand was low. I think demand was pretty high still. But I think they are doing a great job at eliminating a lot of these bots that may have gotten there early, typically. So I did say that I think it was going to be a good day for the chat and it ended up being a great day for the chat. Probably better than I expected. Even though I didn't get one yesterday, but that's okay. Yep, I think so too. I think they wanted to make sure that the comment is probably going to be one of the more popular ones. That's why I think anyone who lands a low mint comment today will probably be, <laughs> you know, in a pretty good spot in a little bit. Now, I'm not too sure when these are going to be, when the localization, as they call it, will happen. Localization basically means the app the language will be able to be read in different languages, the text and that. So when that happens, that's when I keep thinking a lot of these countries will start pouring into VV because they can actually read the app at that point. You know, just imagine you have this great, amazing VV app, but it's in a different language than you can read and speak in. You may not be all about it at that point. And we don't know when that's going to happen. Sometime this year, I would imagine, maybe it's in a couple months from now. Maybe it's all the way until the summer. Maybe next fall. We don't have an exact date. So I think it's important to not spend all of your money on this one. <laughs> you know, save some gems left over for some future drops would just be things that I'm going to be doing. Not financial advice, you know, you guys can absolutely do whatever you feel you guys need to do. We got Willow Kid in the building. But let's go. Just did it to bless the chat. Appreciate you, Jose. 
Yes. And the thing is that a lot of these releases are synchronized with releases that happen on TV, the physical world, et cetera. We've seen Marvel line that up a lot. I think a lot of these releases are strategic too. Hopefully the L goes away today. Absolutely. I'm going to run back through how I get these drops. Now, a lot of you guys have been tuning in lately. See, I'm kind of on a low cold streak now, 0 for 4, but that's okay. And again, guys, if you guys like to spam it, you know, if you guys like to sit here and just do one of these numbers and just spam, absolutely. You do have to be careful. You don't hit that notify me button though. You just sit here and do this. That's what that's the way a lot of people have been having success. So if you guys have success doing that way, you know, feel free to keep doing it that way. For me personally, I like to try to time it. You know, I like to try to stay in rhythm with the countdown. I'm going to show you guys my way to do it. Now, I'm going to act like there's zero minutes left. Obviously, we see that there's 50 minutes till the drop. But I'm going to act like there's zero minutes left. When there's about 10 seconds left, I really start to focus on the countdown. I'm going to show you guys what I've been doing that helps out big time. With about 30 seconds left, I'll actually back out. This is kind of risky, but it's been helping me big time. I'll back out and come back in. I do that to make sure the timer stays in sync. I'll show you guys what happened to me yesterday and the reason why I probably didn't get one. Now, again, the buy now is going to pop up above the notify me and below the details box. So about 10 seconds left here. I'm going to start counting out loud. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, zero, press. Might have had it that time. It looked like I was just maybe a tad bit late. But basically, the buy now button pops up one second after zero. So if you wait till zero you know, shows up, and then you wait till buy now shows up, and then react to it, you maybe just be a little bit too slow because I feel like that reaction time, you're not going to be as quick. So I like to just time it. I'm basically getting ready to press buy now before I see the buy now pop up. And the reason why I do that is like I keep saying, guys, I just like to try to get in there before all the people who react to the buy now button popping up and then pressing it. So one full second after zero, the buy now button pops up. So I stay in rhythm in that countdown and try to almost predict when that buy now pops up. Now, you can be a little bit early. And if you're a little early, you probably won't get the drop. That's the downside of timing it. If you do time it too early, you know, maybe you press buy now before that buy now button pops up. You know, I've done that too before. If that happens, you press it. You may have to kind of go back and double tap it. Or just tap it once. You know, I just double tap it at the end just to, because that's just quickest for me. But I like to try to one tap it, you know, time it. We'll see how I do today. Hopefully I get in there. I think I will be able to get one of these drops. One thing I like to do is back out with 30 seconds. You guys saw, I just showed you guys how I did that. Again, you just back out and come right back in. Now it's risky. I say it's risky because you never know what could happen with like 30 seconds left. If you back out, maybe, you know, the phone crashes on you and you're trying to get back in the app. I like to back out and come back in just to make sure my timer is synced perfectly. I'm going to show you guys the video from yesterday's drop. And maybe the reason why I didn't get it. All right, let me let me go to about 10 seconds left. All right, here's the drop from the cover girls. I did not get this drop. But let me show you guys why I think I didn't get it. Oh. So five, four, three, two, one, zero. Boom. Looked like I timed it pretty good, right? But here's the thing. Let me see if I can bring up exactly what I mean. Aha. All right. So if you can see my timer in the top corner here says it's 11 o'clock. But the buy now button's still not up. And so that's because I think the timer just wasn't synced properly. I probably should have backed out and came back in with about 10 seconds, 20 seconds left. And so I'll go through again this whole timer. Four, 
three, one. So I feel like because of that, I wasn't able to get it. Now, maybe it was just not because of that. Maybe it's just because, you know, the amount of demand there was. I just, you know, happens that way sometimes. But I think if you can get it to where you're backing out and you come back in and you feel like your timer's perfect. You know, I've had great success that way. Now, it is risky. You know, some people have pointed out before you can back out, say you back out, say there's only eight seconds left. I want to do it with eight seconds left. You're really, really risking at that point. If I was in here with only eight seconds left, I would just do the drop normally. But say you get we get to the point where there's zero minutes left and you have 50 seconds left, right? 55 seconds. You know, you'll have plenty of time to kind of back out, come back in. And I like to keep doing that, backing out, come back in all the way up until about 25 seconds even. Now, the closer you do that with zero seconds left, you know, the closer you are playing with fire. But again, the closer you are to making sure that timer is absolutely perfect. I'm going to go over some of the details, or not some of the details, but some of the prices in the marketplace, or some of the things that just dropped recently. We just had the cover girls, so I'm going to go over them. All the way from Series 1 to Series 2. So Series 1, the Batgirl, the FA Batgirls at 194. You have the Catwoman, FA Catwoman at 294. We have Mara, FA Mara. That's the one good thing about the Series 1 of the cover girls. They're all FAs. 199 for Mara. And then we have Supergirl FA. Still at 1K. Holding strong at 1K. Now we got Series 2. We got Batgirl non-FA. $71. Then we have Wonder Woman. The Uncommon. This is the Wonder Woman non-FA. I still think it's a great collectible. 265 is the price. Then we have... Supergirl non FA 210 is the price, and the ultra rare Harley Quinn non FA is 330. Seem back is asking, How do you get your VV sign? Great question. So, luckily, that VV sign did come in. That's from the VV team, the Ecomi team. Shout out to David Dan, you know, everybody part of that Ecomi team that made that happen. They actually gave that sign out along with the apparel, the shirts here that we have, along with some other collectibles. They gave them out to a bunch of early influencers, you know, everybody part of the community that really helped grow this thing. Because you got to think in the early days, the VV team, the Comey team, they didn't really have the money to be marketing, you know. And so the fact that the community got together, we kind of took it under our own wing and we kind of really put it out there to the world. We did everything we could to spread spread the VV word to everybody. They kind of looked out for us and, you know, hooked it up with the VV sign up there, the shirts, the apparel, you know, so grateful for that. So happy when that came in, the big box that it came in, unbelievable. My parents were like, you know, what did you buy? <laughs> oh, great to know. Great to, great to know. And I believe that is the common. Yep, that is the common. So as you see, you know, we, we see this time after time again. The VV team makes the common the most popular character. And we've seen it with the F.A. Joker, the F.A. Harley Quinn, the F.A. Batman, Todd Batman, you know, Elsa, Wonder Woman, <laughs> Wonder Woman F.A. We've seen time after time again, the VV team makes the most popular character of the common. And this is why I'm so big on low mint commons, because if it's the most popular character and it's the common with the most amount of additions, you know, how do you separate yourself from that? The low mints. So that's why with the comics, too. You know, with a lot of these collectibles, not every collectible is the same. Not every comic is the same. But for the most part, they make the most popular character, the common. Because they want the, the majority of the people to get their favorite character. It puts a little bit more value on that lower rarity as well. Ooh, Sleep Insane. I think Fantastic 452 FA Black Panther is possible this week. Alex said Black History Month and a big FA this week. I like where you're thinking with that, Sleeping. You know, I might have to clip this and say sleeping is actually the real alien in the building. <laughs> you might be right, sleeping. I think, you know, that's a great hypothesis right there. Market seems to be cooling off the last few days. Yeah, clockwise. I would say actually the last week or so. I would say actually it's even the last couple of days. It's starting to pick up a slowly again. I would say the last couple of weeks after the huge run up, you know, early January, even mid January to late to late. I would say January kind of ran up to all time highs. 
And now we're and then we saw a little low period, you know, it kind of, you know, the market kind of stopped a little bit, stalled out a little bit. That's usual. That's normal. I mean, it's just the ebb and flow of the markets. Things don't go up forever and ever. They kind of come back down a little bit. But when they come back down, they're always higher than the previous floor. So when we see another pump, you know, I think it's coming soon. I'm not sure when, but I think what's been happening is a lot of people have just been kind of anticipating huge drops. And if we don't get these huge drops, I mean, they're probably going to put their money into a lot of these collectibles that they wanted to, but been holding off for a little bit, especially comics. I think comics are about to go on a run like we've never seen before. Maybe it's going to take another week or two, a week or so, maybe a few more weeks. But once we're able to show them off on our profile, once we're able to show these comics off in our showrooms, you know, I'm I'm so excited for this. And I'm not even the biggest comic fan. So can you imagine the comic experts out there, the huge comic fans? They're going to be putting a lot of these comics in the showroom on the profile. It's going to make a whole bunch of other people FOMO into these comics. And man, you see where the prices are on some of these comics and we can't even put them in the showroom yet. So I think comics are due for a huge run. Let's go punch. Top of the morning. Appreciate y'all big time. How we doing, Jerry? Jerry in the building. Yeah, you can always pull down the refresh as well. If you guys don't like backing out of the screen, let me guys show you this. If you guys don't want to back out, like I was saying, you guys don't want to back out and come back in. There's definitely another way. You can always just pull down and refresh. That's another way to refresh. If your timer here is speeding down, you can always refresh. Just for me personally, though, sometimes when we see the timer speeding all the way down or it's lagging, I still don't have confidence that just refreshing is going to make it perfect. Now, it definitely can. But for me, I just have more confidence of backing out and coming back in. But maybe that's because I have a pretty newer phone and pretty fast connection. If you're someone that doesn't want to risk it, you know, someone who doesn't have the best connection in the world, kind of an older phone, you may be better off just kind of refreshing the page by scrolling down. What up, Be Lit? How we doing, fam? Awesome username. Let's get some likes up there, gentlemen and ladies. Appreciate that, Superman, big time. Appreciate that. You've been on VV since February 2nd. Okay, nice, nice. Just join in. Well, you're going to have an amazing 2022 year. February 2nd. Yeah, it's still so early. I mean, I think we're on season three only right now, right? Season three. This is going to have season five, season seven, season 10 soon. And you're going to look back and say, wow, I joined Vivi in the beginning of 2022. It's going to be legendary. This year is something that a lot of us OGs have been kind of waiting on, you know, what's going to happen in 2022. We're all thinking 2022 is going to be a huge year. This year and next year is probably going to be, we're going to see some of the biggest growth happen. We thought we saw huge growth happen last year. I truly believe at the end of this year, we're all going to be blown away. Haven't been lucky enough to land a drop in a month. Notice I have better download speed when my Wi-Fi is off. Going to try that today. Good luck. Hey, good luck, Live Wire 15. I usually always keep my Wi-Fi on. I don't like to mess with that too much. But, hey, you know, if you haven't been doing the drops too well, sometimes it's best to try everything. There was a point where I thought I had to do the drops with my phone charging. For the longest time, I only got drops with my phone charging. If I was not charging my phone, I was not getting the drop. I thought that was going to be a huge factor, but now I don't even charge my phone. That's a lot. I charge my phone to make it as high up as a charge I possibly can, but I don't keep it charged while I'm doing the drop, I should say. I used to have it charging while I did the drops, and I used to think that was the only way I was getting the drops. But now I like to try to have my phone as highly charged as possible. It's like at 89% right now. could be higher, but I think I took it off the charge this morning. We have 36 minutes to the drop. I will be going over some more prices before the market closes. I think that is a huge factor to try to keep your phone as charged as possibly you can. I'm going to go over the Mickey and Friends. Start with the commons this time. Last time I started with the Secret Rare. So Mickey Mouse down to 770 I think it hit like 850 at one point. I think this is an easy $1,000 collectible. We have the first edition Mickey Mouse, legendary character. Minnie Mouse, I think this will be right behind Mickey. I don't have a Minnie anymore. It's 649 is the floor. I have two Mickeys. 
Then we have Daisy Duck, the rare. 609 is the floor. Donald Duck, 9 989 is the floor. I can see Daisy Duck keep going up. I think Daisy Duck's just going to follow Donald Duck, you know, go right behind Donald Duck. Donald Duck is the uncommon. Daisy's the rare. But I think Donald Duck just being such an iconic character, I think that will take the lead there between those two. Then we have Pluto. Pluto's at 1.3K. Good to see that, you know, well above 1K. It was below 1K, you know, for a little while. It's floating between 900, 1K. I think that's a good buy right there. I think that's just going to follow Goofy. Goofy's down 3.9K. I'm surprised it dipped below 4. I think it was flowing between like 3.5 and 4K for a while. I think that's going to hit 5K eventually. I think those cards are definitely a safe, safe play. Not financial advice, but when you have a first edition Disney, you know, I don't think you can go wrong with first edition anything Disney, especially an iconic character like Mickey Mouse, Minnie Mouse, Donald Duck. These are some legendary characters. And then you have the first ever secret rare from Disney. I think that'll be big as well. Let's go over Batman Black and White. This is always my go-to. Uh, this is what I always check in the market pl- uh, marketplace. You have Todd Batman, 11.4K is the floor. Good to see that up there. 1,000 mints at 12K. I always try to see you know, what the lower mints are going for when, when the floor is at whatever price it's at. 11.4K, 214 Todd Batman left in the marketplace. You have the FA Joker is going for 1.2K. That's been flowing anywhere from 1.4 to all the way down to 1.1K. I've seen it at the very low. I think that's a great, you know, great collectible right there. FA Joker, legendary collectible. Harley Quinn FA. I'm really shocked that it's not right below FA Joker. Still holding on to the two that I got. 780 is the floor. FA Penguins, probably right below 1K. Yep, 938 still. I think it's dipped a little bit since last time I talked about it, maybe yesterday. I think it was up around 975. I don't really see that dipping below 800 too much. Yeah, my Nightwing, 1.9K. It did dip below 2K. I'm really shocked with the Nightwing still. We've seen, I think, all-time high was like maybe 4.5K. Now it's dipped just below 2K. I think that's a steal. Um, we got Joe Mad Batman. This is the first edition Batman. I'm huge on this first set. I think this first set of VV is going to be untouchable, unreachable eventually. Joe Mad's at 1.3k. We got Becky at 2k. Batman who laughs at 270. The battle statue is just under 1k. I've actually had mine listed for a while again. Over the night, you guys might have seen it listed. I have a 458 mint number. So pretty low mint, sub 500. <laughs> and even though it's FA Killer Croc, I didn't really know who Killer Croc was that much. But I love this collectible so much, the fact that it's the first ever Batman in color. I think that's going to be iconic. The same way when Mickey Mouse in color drops, that's going to be iconic. People are going to be saying this is the first Mickey Mouse in color. The same way that we have Batman here, the first Batman in color. Now, I had it listed for about like 1.7K, 1.6K just because – it is a low mint. That was probably the cheapest price for that mint number. So I was expecting it to sell overnight, and then I just go and buy the floor at like 970 and then pocket the 600 difference. I do love being an original owner of those three-digit mints. I think it's so hard to get, especially as we go in the future. But because I need some extra gems, I was okay with letting that one go. But it didn't sell, so I'm just going to keep it. Sleeping Comics knows this stuff 100% from Punch. That's a fact. That's a fact. Sleeping comics and comics and crypto. You know, those are my two go-to great people. Mr. JKD Rob, good luck today as well. Steve Freelander, good morning, good morning. Right before the market closes, let me go over these golden moments. You know, shout out to all the golden moment holders out there. Hopefully I can get it in before it closes. We got Walt, 42.9K dipped a little bit i mean when it dips from 47 to 42 it's not that much of a dip <laughs> but it did dip i'm just going to go in order here from where they're at in the market save some time but the avengers logo at 2k c3po 4.4k i think that's just going to continue to follow r2d2 those two are going to be amazing so glad i got them we got elsa at 3.5k we got bart 2k i actually thought about letting my duplicate go but 
you know, the more I thought about it, the more I talked to APB, shout out to my dog. You know, I can't let a Disney Golden moment go just yet. What am I thinking, right? <laughs> we got Iron Man 2.6K. I think these Golden Moments are going to be iconic, guys. I really do. I think every single one of them, we're just going to look back. I said it when we had the drop of Golden Moments. We said, or I said, anybody who lucks out and just gets one of these Disney Golden Moments, you're going to remember that forever. You're going to be thanking yourself. You just got one. I know a lot of people might have been upset you didn't get the whole set. You didn't get multiples, etc. But just to lock in one Disney Golden Moment, I think will be iconic long term. So we got Mickey's hat going for 4.5K. Got the Pizza Planet truck going for 2K. R2 7.7. I don't know how I'm still looking at these prices because the marketplace should be closed. So let me try to hurry this up. Got the skateboard, you know, 1.7K. Wally 1.5K. And this is the thing, right? The skateboards are the rare going for 1.7K. And then we have Homer, the common, going for 2K. We see this all across the board almost. I mean, some of them are different depending on how significant that character is or whatever the case may be. But so many times, you know, with Vivi, that the common is the most popular character. So that may flip some of these different rarities that are more scarce. Something that most people don't really think about is that popularity – and demand is going to create that scarcity. So just something to think about. Let's go, Jerry. Appreciate that big time. Everyone like the video and sub to JD's channel. Let's get him 3.5K. Unbelievable. You know, just to talk a little bit about my uh, YouTube journey real quick. The marketplace just closed. So unbelievable i started my youtube journey i think in 2018 i might have made the channel in 2017 but i posted my first video in 2018 and it was all about music at the time you know had no idea how to make music never made music in my entire life <laughs> i was doing a podcast for the duns fantasy lineups and the podcast just weren't really working out so i was like you know what how can i market this in a way that's a little bit different a little bit more unique had the mic laying around i said what if i just made a song to advertise it Next thing I know, I fell in love with it, started learning little by little, learned how to post it on SoundCloud. Someone said, wrote a comment, how do I buy this on iTunes? I started freaking out, like, what do you mean you want to buy it on iTunes? I don't even know how to put it on iTunes yet. So I learned how to, you know, I learned what TuneCore was, learned how to put my songs on Spotify, iTunes, Apple Music, all that stuff. Then it led into making music, making music videos, had so much fun with it. Really, that time in life for me was just motivation for myself. I was making that music for myself just, just, just to stay motivated in life, everything I was going after. And got to about 900, 950, almost 1,000 subs, I think like 990 maybe. But it took years. It took from 2018 all the way up until 2020 to get just under 1,000 subs. So when I found Vivi in March, March 1st, I didn't start making content on YouTube right away. About about a couple months later, I started hopping on YouTube and the VV fam, you guys, the community blew my channel up, went from 900 subs all the way to, you know, 3K, whatever it's at right now, and just continue to grow. And now I'm making all VV content and couldn't be happier. You know, you guys are amazing. I appreciate all of your support so much. Let's blow this platform to the moon. Let's go, Punch. Unbelievable. Getting back into the music bag slowly, but, you know. It's getting there. I just played a couple of instrumentals that really, really motivated me to get in my bag last night. I've saved a couple of instrumentals when I felt like time was right and I re-listened to them all again. And I said, wow, you know, JD is about to come back in his music bag. Perfect timing too, because if you guys aren't following, you know, it's wonderful. Pineapple Gang, shout out to Pineapple Gang out there. He's dropping an album soon. You know, it's going to be perfect timing that I'm getting back into my music bag finally. So if you guys aren't tuned in, go follow It's Wonderful. He's dropping an album soon. I think in a couple weeks, maybe. Maybe, yeah, in about a couple weeks, I think. And it's going to shake up the whole NFT space. You know, if you guys like music, you guys like NFTs, definitely an album, you know, definitely an artist that you want to tune into. What's your speed and ping, Crypto Boy? Let me run a speed test for you guys. I feel like people like to know the exact speed i'm working with here <laughs> hey 
And he asked, uh, are you in East Coast? Which state? He's asking all the details here. I am in the East Coast. Uh, great videos, man. VB newbie here and loving it. Love the excitement of the drops. Appreciate that big time. Yada dog, big time. Appreciate that. I love these drops. There is a new drop system that's going to be changing. So the drop system won't be maybe as exciting as it is right now. It's not first come first serve. I am going to try to do my best to keep it as exciting as we possibly can. Whoa, my speed's looking pretty slow right now. This is probably the highest latency I've ever had. I think my mom's on the computer. <laughs> So we got M, uh, my download speed's 289. Usually it's like 330 something. My upload speed 38. But check my latency, 17 milliseconds. If you guys have been tuning in for a while, you guys know it's been as low as 9 milliseconds. It's usually around 11 or 12. Right now it's at 17. So I may have to go holler at my mom right now until her to get off the computer. <laughs> Slowing down my internet. But um, <laughs> I'm not even sure if she is or not. I think she might be. Usually that's the case if it's going kind of slow. But this is something I want to see, show you guys right here. See how the seconds are going down extremely fast? I don't like to refresh because I feel like it doesn't always change it. So I'll back out. This is a good example to show you guys. And now it's going to go down normal. Now it's back in sync. And if I still didn't feel like it was really in sync enough, I would just... Again, I'll just go back and click it again. I'm probably going to do that until, you know, I'll maybe wait until there's zero minutes left in like 30 seconds. And then I'll, excuse me, and then I'll try it again. Facts, Willow Kid said, bro, there's going to be season 150 years. And that's a fact. I mean, you got to think, right? Disney's not going to partner with some kind of platform that's only here for a year or two. You know, they did their research. <laughs> they probably vetted the whole Okomi team. They know that they're going to last decades. Disney, Marvel, Givenchy, DC, these legendary billion-dollar brands, they're only going to partner with a platform to increase their legacy long-term. They're not going to do something just to quick capitalize off the money hype short-term. No, no, no. Vivi's here for decades. That means 10s, 20, you know, 30 years from now. But Vivi's still going to be here. That's what happens when you partner with these the biggest brands in the world. So the fact that we're here for season three, Willow is right. There's going to be a season 100. There's going to be a series or a season 10, 20, 50. This is just beginning, guys. Like I said, I mean, a lot of people in the beginning days thought maybe I was kind of, you know, a little bit too bullish a little bit too fairyland you know talking about how there's going to be hundreds of millions of people here one day eventually there will be i feel that vivi is still brand new and not many big collectors know about it yet this is all going to change this year 2022 and i agree punch i so agree and you will be here willow that's for sure man and punch i agree a lot of big collectors i think in the very beginning when i heard the whole nft space the whole NFT buzz, they were a little bit hesitant. I think the same kind of feeling happened with social media, right? A lot of the kids got on the MySpace, Facebook right away. And then what happened? Over time, we saw parents kind of be hesitant to get on Facebook, social media, said it was a fad. Then they wanted to get on eventually to be around their kids. So the parents got on Facebook. A lot of parents are on the social media now. And then what happened? The grandparents, they were kind of against the whole digital social media phase. But since their grandkids got on it, their kids got on it. Now the grandparents are on social media and Facebook. And I think the same thing is going to happen. The same transformation will happen with NFTs and this whole digital collecting space. Soon it's going to be so <laughs> obvious, digital collecting. Like in a couple of years from now, digital collecting will seem so obvious to the entire world. Because you get to collect these licensed collectibles on your phone, in the palm of your hand. And take them anywhere in the world that you want. It's going to be gigantic. We got Thomas Conger in the building. When the drop system changing. So I think, you know, either late February, late this month, or sometime in March. We don't know the exact date. But they have said before that sometime in February, March, maybe April. But I think it's going to be sooner than April. I think they want to get a 
you know, squared away before springtime, before the summer hits. So I'm thinking late February, maybe March. And the VV team's so great at adapting and adjusting to where, say they do change the drop, right? Which they we know they, they're going to. Say they do change it to that drop system, the Q system that we all know is coming. Maybe the community doesn't like it after all. Maybe all the people that were rooting for it, you know, waiting for that to happen, they don't end up like, liking that drop system. If everybody in the community doesn't like it, then I think the Comey team would end up changing it. Maybe they'll think of a new idea, maybe go back to something. The Comey team has always done an amazing job at adapting. This system's really going to be geared for, you know, the new users, the family-oriented vibe. Plus, it's going to help out those people with the Master Collector Program points. You know, those people that have been stacking up collections, you know, holding a, holding your secret rares, holding your sets, your full sets are going to give you a ton of points. Those people are going to get rewarded when this new system drops. So as much as I love this drop system the way it is, that's so exciting. I feel like I get to compete again in college sports for a split moment in time. I'm going to be pretty excited when that Master Collector program rolls out. So I feel like I've positioned myself pretty well for that. The, the Collector Con is in Miami, March 5th. Who's coming here for this? Wow, I might have to go there, Punch. You know, big fan of Miami. It's snowing where I'm at right now, East Coast, Jersey. So I feel like I need that warm weather right now. I have Steamboat Common, Mint 1645. You think it'll ever pass 2K? I do see Rios. I do see that pass in 2K. Um, I think the common and the uncommon may just take some time. I'm not sure exactly on the price. Maybe it's dipped below 1K right now. I think it's inevitable they get to 1K. And if you wait even longer, I think it's inevitable that they get to 2K. As that ultra rare gets to 10K again, I think it hit 10K before that ultra rare. As that gets to 10K and so on, I think, you know, that's got a good chance at even surpassing 10K. Once that happens, I think it'll carry up that uncommon and common with it. Living on the edge is where I play <laughs> VV by not preloading gems and I get more drops now. Yep. So just NFT and B, that's one way to do it. Absolutely. If you guys want to do the drops and you don't want to enter in any money, you can definitely wait until you see if you're successful on the drop or not and then adding the gems. Now, he says he's living on the edge by doing that because you are kind of playing with fire. There are chances that, and I've seen it happen before, to where you know, you're not risking it. You're waiting waiting to add those gems until the, you see if you're successful on the drop or not. Most of the time, I would say about 80% of the time, 9% of the time, that's perfectly fine. But about 10, 20% of the time, I've seen people have an error screen. Their app crashes at that moment. They're not able to get the drop. So I would say it's definitely safer if you can add in the gems before the drop. But you know, not everybody has that kind of money, disposable money. So if you're someone who wants to live on the edge like that, you can definitely wait. This is a tough one. Joe Mad or Penguin? I think Penguin's going to do amazing. Definitely less mints. I mean, Joe Mad doesn't have that many more mints, though. And Joe Mad is part of the first ever set on VV. It's a first edition of Batman. It's not first appearance. That is the first appearance of Penguin. I don't think we'll ever see another Penguin on the app. That Penguin is very rare in real life as well. It's one of the most sought-after collectibles. It's one of the rarest collectibles in that Batman Black and White series. So I love the Penguin. I think Penguin's going to do amazing, especially with this new Batman movie coming out. Pretty sure he plays a big role. But if it was me, long, long term, maybe because of that, you know, short term, Penguin pumps first. Penguin could do well short term if you time it. I'm never a huge, big person on trying to time things, though. For me, I'd rather just long hold and be safe with it. And in that case, I would choose, me personally, the Joe M. Batman. I only have one of each of these still, one Penguin, one Joe M. Batman, but I don't think you can ever go wrong long-term having the first set on VV. We all love that top Batman because it's the first ever NFT on VV. On top of the fact that it's the first appearance of Batman, it's the first ever NFT from DC. So many you know, huge things with that Batman. But I do believe the first, it'll always go back to the Genesis. And just imagine three years from now, having that first set on VV is going to be iconic. You can't go wrong either way, but I think long term, if it was me, I would have I would feel safer with the Joe M. Batman. <laughs> Jason says, 
February 27th is National Pokemon Day. Just saying. <laughs> Facts. It's all good vibes in the VD fam. That's a big fact right there. I'm on a side in the building. Let's go. Triple X. Hello, everyone. Here we go again. Triple X, are you on TikTok? Because I keep getting a, a like from Triple X. I'm wondering if that's the same person or not. If you are, you know, shout out to you, brother. Appreciate you for tuning into the TikToks. <laughs> I've been just posting my showroom lately on TikTok. Hey, that's a fact. Then we may get a collab from Willow Kid in there one day, too. Uh, Punch says, JD, hoping to see you collaborate with non-fungible, wonderful Pineapple. That's a fact. You know, I think I got a couple of features on his new album, so make sure you guys stay tuned. Can't wait till you guys hear that. Nine is, mine is 19 milliseconds now. Yeah, triple X minus two. I may have to do another one, see what the uh, speed is now. K Walker in the building. What matters is your ping to AWS servers. Interesting. All right, David Rosenbaum. How do we figure out the ping to the AWS servers? Yeah, that was actually a great question right there. Triple <laughs> X just asked the same question. <laughs> Good point. How do we check what the ping is that AWS servers? <laughs> the best thing I managed to do was to partner up with a friend that has a Rizzo to complete the first set on VV. It made me feel so good. Like less than 1750 people can pull this off. Thoughts? Punch, I think this is a great thing. You know, when you partner up, partnering up, investing with a, someone else in a collectible. Now, my only downside to this punch is you have to trust the person, right? You have to have Maybe you're friends with the person in real life. I think that that'd be okay. Be better off if it was like a family member or something, because you know friends can deceive each other as well in real life, which is a shame. It does happen, and money is a <laughs> the root of all evil. So you never know. Rizzo could get up to say, you know, five hundred thousand dollars, and maybe that guy is saying two fifty each or five hundred k and runs off on you. Hopefully that doesn't happen. Anything like that, you know. I don't think it will happen. I think you probably have good trust in your friend or whoever is the person that you're splitting it with. So if everything all goes all well, man, I think that's a you know solid idea. Yes, John the Bow. Is it just me or is FA Harley disgustingly cheap right now? Yes. <laughs> it's not just you. I've been saying the same thing. I have a duplicate Harley and I've actually been trying to let it go it's a 2000 mint though so i don't, I don't want to sell it for the floor I've, I've had it listed for like 925 which is i'm surprised it's even below 1k usually harley quinn fa goes like right below fa joker but right now fa joker is like almost double what fa harley quinn is and i don't think fa joker is overvalued so Homar Casa J. Has, this is a good question here. I'll address it. Do you think the MTL and Omen NFT will fix the gem prices? I definitely think so. I feel like it will. And I had a friend try to sell a, secret, a Spidey Seeker Rare, but no one wanted it. But no one wanted to take it, but will for 25K because the gem discounts. And that's the thing, Omar. People know that you can go like off the app and get these discounts. Now, I don't suggest you do that, but... It is what's happening right now. So I think that's a huge factor in why people are doing that. People may think, you know, why pay the real price if you can go, you know, around the ballot and get it for cheaper. I don't think that's going to continue. I don't think that possibility will continue. And I think the MTL is going to help big time. A lot of people are stuck in this way of thinking that the MTL is going to crash the prices, right? And maybe they're right. I think they're completely wrong. I think we've waited for, you know, months, a year just to have the uh, option to cash out just to make it legit. So many people have been sitting on the sidelines, whether it's only 50 bucks to enter. I know so many friends that, you know, think it's legit now, you know, are kind of confident in the platform and the people who run it. Maybe they want to put in 50, a hundred bucks and they don't even want to put it in yet because they can't withdraw it. So I know people in that situation with just 50 to a hundred bucks that they're afraid to put in. I also know people with millions of dollars, hundreds of thousands of dollars on the sideline, not putting in yet because they can't withdraw it. It's not a safe investment at that point. 
once people aren't afraid to put money in because they can withdraw it, it's going to seem like a safe investment for so many people at that point. Sure, there's going to be people that, you know, take some profits on some collectibles, I'm sure. But I think the amount of money that will flow in, I mean, just look at OpenSea. OpenSea is great because it's liquidable, right? <laughs> think of how many people are able to cash out and the prices aren't crashed, are they? They dip. And a lot of that's just because it's not tied to some of the biggest brands in the world and they're just random NFTs. But imagine if Vivi was as liquid, right? I think big things would would happen people aren't going to be afraid to put in you know hundreds of thousands of dollars if they can withdraw it think of that think of how hard it would be if you had millions of dollars of disposable income and you're trying to find an investment trying to find some things to put some money in and there's this amazing app tied to the biggest brands in the world like disney but they say but you can't withdraw now unless you did the homework on david dan al Khan, all this all the team right all the team members you're probably looking at it from the outside saying, I don't know if I want to put in, you know, hundreds of thousands, millions in something I can't cash out. So I think the MTL only the NFT will help out big time. Let's go punch. I love when you say this stuff, man, because it's true. And I think people need to hear this punch said we are in a new digital re renaissance right now. And we picked the best platform early, like earlier than anybody else in the world. And this is so amazing. We are so blessed. I've learned from, I've learned the grass is not always greener on the other side. Patience. That's a fact. I was told there's an NFT conference in NYC in June and hello, K will be there. I think there probably is an NFC, uh, NFT conference this summer. I think there's a couple NFT conferences going on this year. Hey, Remy C in the building. How we doing, fam? I'm late, but just in time for the drop. How we doing, fam? Doing great. As always, we got eight minutes and 40 seconds to the drop. I'm going to go over what they look like one more time. Eight minutes, 30, 32 seconds. I don't know which one I want to begin today. Hoping for, if I had a choice here, probably hoping for the ultra rare just because it would be pretty expensive, I think, coming out in the market. If I can land an ultra rare on the drop, you know, that'd be amazing. And then I think I'm going to try to get at least a couple cheap commons. Those are my two favorites. Maybe I hit a low mint comment on the drop. That'd be amazing as well. I'd probably just hodl that one. I don't like to try to sell too many low mints if I can help it. I think the ultra rare will do great. I'm excited for this one. This is one of those drops where. I think most of the cultures that are on Vivi currently may not be too big into this one. And because of that reason, they could come out in the market pretty cheap. And they may stay in the market for pretty cheap. We don't know how soon this localization will happen where different countries can start reading the app in different languages. But again, if you can stack up and kind of hold for when that happens, I think a lot of people will pour into, especially this drop, especially these collectibles. Especially when they start re releasing Series 2, Series 3, Series 4. These first appearances are going to go crazy. In whole collection, what is the lowest mint number you have? Great question, C. Rio. So, maybe kind of let down on this one. but And I say that only because it's an extremely low mint. But it's not like your big brand, Superman, Batman, Spider-Man. It's actually an artist collectible. Now, let me see if I can bring it up. Boom. So, it's a 43 mint. So the third one available ever. And of course, it's a devil bunny. The dunny. I had to. <laughs> so this is a 43 mint number right here. Which the one one of the reasons why I kept this is because one, it's a dunny. I had to. <laughs> but no, the real reason is because it's from Tristan Eaton. I think he's gonna be a pretty big artist. Now I sold a lot of my artist collectibles. A lot of my Ron English collectibles, I did love Ron English's work. You know, shout out to Ron. Being from Jersey, too. Wish I could have collected his whole set. You know, Jermaine Rogers. I'm one of those choices. I wanted that whole set. Only have one assassin left. So, like I said, the Frank Kozik, Labbits, I sold most of them. So, I got rid of most of my artist collectibles, and I tried to focus on those big brands, the Superman, the Walt Disney, you know, more Spider-Man, Batman, those big, big iconic characters. So, because of that, I wanted to kind of hedge because I do think the artist collectibles will do great on Immutable X. And so kind of to hedge all my big branded iconic IP 
collectibles. I wanted to keep this 43 mint Devil Bunny. Just in case they do go off kind of like what I'm expecting on OpenSea, Immutable Lex. You know, if these Devil Bunnies get sold for a few ETH, having a third one ever, I thought I could probably sell back to Tristan if you're watching. Shout out to my guy Tristan. But if not, you know, I think the 43 is going to be legendary. There's only a 41. That's the first one ever. 42, 43. So it's a third available to the public. That's my lowest mint number. Um, let's see here. I have a special mint number, 777. It's the Coca-Cola Snow Globe. It's an uncommon. I would say my lowest mint number of like a big branded collectible. I used to have a 68 Catwoman. You got rid of the 68 Catwoman. I have a 680 Catwoman now. But I think my lowest one might be Harley Quinn here. Harley Quinn FA. 288 is the mint number. Can you guys see? 288. Now, the reason why I love that mint number, love that Harley Quinn is because not only is it a low mint, I'm the original owner of that one. I bought that from the store for $59. Same with the FA Joker. I have a 559, bought that from the store. A 433 Penguin, bought that from, from the store. So, like, a lot of my low mints, Joe Mad, a 615. All my three digit low mints I got from the store early on. So, I was just, they mean the most to me for sure. Oh man, be lit. He missed two drops because he was loading in gems. Yeah, that's unfortunate. That's kind of the risk. Lowest mid numbers 116. That's great right there. Yo, hope hopefully hit one punch. I know you've been striking out big time recently. We got three minutes and 43 seconds to the drop. We got energy in the building. How we doing, fam? How you doing, my man? Hey, Al Rod says, showroom is amazing, bro. Congrats. Thank you so much, Al. I spent a lot of time updating my old, old showrooms. And there's a few reasons why I want to do that, but I haven't touched them up in a while. I wasn't able to look into the app every time I opened these old showrooms I made, like especially the first showrooms I made. It constantly kept crashing, but I think they changed it. They fixed it. And so I was able to update them all. This is Johnny Dunn's OG Batcave. I'm not going to go into details. We have a couple of minutes left of the drop, but this is my first ever showroom. I had to update that. That's the one where I had like all these Batman kind of going against a whole bunch of other collectibles and like a little war scene I made in there. You got Johnny's World. This is one of my favorite showrooms ever. So much time into this one. This is the one that I have the JaVinci on the floor, I believe. A whole bunch of collectibles set up there. It's my all gold showroom, just everything gold that I have in this one showroom. Kind of made my own Disney golden Dragon Girl moments. <laughs> if you guys know, the Dragon Girl has like a black base. And the base looks very nice. I have a couple of showrooms where I'm showing off the base kind of thing. But for these, I wanted to just make it look clean, simple. And it took a kind of a decent amount of work. I had to match it up perfect to where I lowered the Dragon Girl so the base is kind of inside the gold and you can't see it. Then I have all the Disney golden moments. This is one of my favorite showrooms again. I love the all gold. The yoga meditation center. I do plan to have like a yoga center, like a meditation, yoga, stretching room. Just something to clear the mind, you know, really help with the mental health of everyone because we're going to be on, you know, iPhones, VR, AR all day. I think it's going to be important to just clear the mind. And so I made a room just for that. The vibe in here is amazing. Maybe hire some yoga instructor, uh, instructors to actually run classes in there one day. This is my huge empty space room right here. It took so much time making this one as well. This is the, one of the rooms where I'm showing off the Dragon Girl base. If you go into this room and kind of look behind you, I have a whole bunch of Dragon Girls with their bases. They look amazing. <laughs> the, the luxury dungeon. This one I have, I think, gold on the bottom and JaVinci up top. I call this one like the dungeon just because it kind of looks like a basement vibe. You know, pretty crammed in, pretty artistic. And outside of the showroom, I made a lot of things kind of pop as well. Trying to make a VV club in this one. Just have one of these showrooms as a new pickup. And I could keep on going. I think I have 20 showrooms right now. But we got less than a minute for the drop. Homeless missed it. Can't miss this drop. Shout out to my coffee gators out there. 
I'm going to get to more comments. I am going to videotape this one as well. Again, guys, I'm going to back out with like 20 seconds left just to make sure my timer's like in sync, not the band. <laughs> With like 20 seconds, I'm going to back out and come back in. All right, backing out. Come back in. One more time. All right, this feels right. 17 seconds. Ten seconds, everyone. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Bye now. Nope. I got it. Oh, my God. See, I was too early. And then when I pressed it a second time, I thought it would be way too late. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Be an ultra rare. Be an ultra rare. Be an ultra rare. Oh, my God. It didn't even feel like a hit that time. I'm kind of just shocked. Be an ultra rare. Oh my god. <laughs> See, like I was not quick on that one. I, I pressed it too early and no buy button showed up. So I kind of had to double back and click again and it worked. <laughs> ultra rare! Ultra rare! 1423 ultra rare. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. Let's go. Oh my god. Maybe gods. Oh my god. Oh my god. Now anybody tuning in, if you got this message, that means you have one. You just have to wait until it gets delivered to your account. Oh my god. Wow. Now if you did not get one, stay on that screen. Do not back out. Stay on this screen. And then every four minutes, you can hit the buy now button. If you back out and come back in, you won't be able to, you won't really be able to do it. Oh, my gosh. I'm going to see how bad this is. Three, two, one. <laughs> People won't believe. That I got this. I was slow today. I was slow. It was not fast. Wow. Da, let's go. All right, guys. Look, I was off on my time and I was too early. <laughs> like what? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> I don't even know what to tweet right now. <coughs> I don't think I'm going to tweet anything. Oh, my gosh. Cole, and appreciate you for tuning in today. How do we do, chat? How do we do? So I didn't get to your uh, your live chat. I'm just, I was kind of backed up, so I'm just going to go through it real quick. You can't sync your drop clock with the real time. Um, I'm really sorry to hear that, Kay Walker. My only suggestion would be to go back and keep coming back in the app. That's what helps me big time recently. Like you guys saw, I backed out with like 30 seconds left. Still felt like the time was just kind of slow. So I backed out again for like 25 seconds. And just to make sure I backed out again with like 20 seconds left. Oh my gosh. How do we do? How do we do, chat? If you got one, you know, write the, the – we have a four-minute rebound coming up. Any second now, so get ready for a four minute rebound. Yeah, thanks for trying to remind me, guys. I was going off on a tangent, forgetting about it. Let's go, Meiji got a dub. Let's go. No, Paz lost. <coughs> Isaac Kerr got an ultra rare. That's big time. Jerry got a dub. Willow got an L. Wow, Willow, you've been struggling big time, my man. I don't know what it is. Willie, you got to move. Wherever you do the drops, you got to move to a different location. <laughs> let's go. Dude's hit. Meet me out. Let's go. It's ultra rare. Let's go. 
Leon Gill missed it today. Pass took an L. Huge L for Triple X. K Walker with the dub. See, K Walker is so crazy because you were just saying how it didn't line up for you. So interesting that it did end up working for you. I'm glad that it's a sync connection or sync the timer and everything. Oh, stealth L for the hundredth time. Hopefully, you keep you know, keep it up because you will get one. You will get one. Colin hit a dub. Let's go. Anybody who hit a dub today. Let's go. Sway hit a dub. All right. Anyone who hit a dub, just write in the chat, like, how many times have you gone on an L streak? Just to let people know that, like, you know, you may strike out 0 for 20. Willow's 0 for almost 40 right now. Willow has been, I would say Willow in December. If December was keeping track, too, you guys would be fighting for, you know, some of the biggest cold streaks. That tells me, though, you guys are due. You know, if you give up, you're going to lose, right? You won't hit another drop. But if you keep going, you know, you're going to take – Tony took an L today, unfortunately. Justin Torres got a dub. Shooter, let's go. Jose got one. I think Jose got one. Eva Unit got a dub. Ultra rare. Whole check out Ultra Rares today. Like, okay, cool. Common. Harv got a common. Superman got one. Let's go. Man, yo, it feels so good. Even though it sucks, you know, I hate seeing people strike out. Like Willow, a whole bunch of people. Tony struck out. A lot of people struck out today, but, you know, seeing a lot of people hit just gives me confidence. It gives other people confidence that, you know, it's possible. Oh my god, I can't believe I hit <laughs> the ultra rare VV gods. Thank you, man. Oh my gosh. I actually did just add some extra money in for the first time too in a while. I added a couple hundred bucks in um to my VV account first time in a while. So yeah, Geo's been striking out, Punch has been striking out. Isaac Kerr, let's go. Ultra rank, ultra rank, ultra rare gang. Wayne got one. Let's go, Wayne. Shout out to you, my man. Wayne, I got to get on that NFT, too. I mean, don't worry. It's, it's coming soon, my man. Coming soon. I got a rare. Colton, Jose got a common. Boy Sam got a dub with an ultra rare. Let's go, Willow. I don't know how I'm doing it, man. Today it doesn't even feel that great just because I feel like I swung and missed. Like, I feel like I – you know what it feels like? It feels like I hit a shank. You know, I teed it up and hit a shank and like it hit off a tree and it bounced in the middle of the fairway. <laughs> and that's happened before. I mean, anyone who's played golf knows that you've hit a bad shot and you got lucky and it bounced off a tree or something and it came out in a perfect spot. You kind of have to just go up to your next shot and laugh and say, you know, it's better to be lucky than good sometimes. <laughs> This was a crazy drop because I did not think I was going to get it, like, at all. Unbelievable. I'm going to put uh, the link to this YouTube video in the tweet. All right, let's see here. Shout out to anyone who's got one today. I mean, we all know how hard it is to get these drops. So to be the original owner of these, I think will be huge. I mean, I didn't get a low mint, but, oh, my gosh, I got ultra rare. Now is the time. Now we have about 25 minutes before the market opens. Now, guys, if you got one today, or even if you didn't get one, now is the time to come up with a plan. Even me, after I make this tweet, I'm going to have to start thinking about, okay, now do I flip this right away for probably what's going to come out as a high price in the market, and then it's probably going to dip back down. I could probably buy back in the ultra rare. But I, it is what it is. I get attached to these when I land it on the drop. I know – strategically ROI wise, it's probably best to sell it right away. You know, let the FOMO kind of not let the FOMO, but let the prices kind of get saturated a little bit undercut. I could probably buy back in for half the price, but I got an ultra rare on the drop. I'm probably just going to hodl it. 
maybe if I can buy like another common or something for cheap right away, I might use that to kind of flip later. But wow, I got an ultra rare on the drop. Haven't had one of these in the longest time. Feels amazing. Let's go. James Robertson got a rare low mint. Let's go. Ooh, I said, let's go. I feel like I shanked the tee shot, hit off a tree, and the ball bounced right onto the green next to the hole. <laughs> it was super early on my click today and had to re-click at the end and still got it. Oh, my God. <laughs> and that's happened, too. Like, anyone who's played golf probably had a terrible shot before. Hit off a tree, and you look, and it's bounced right in the middle of the fairway. Like I said, sometimes you just have to go up to the ball, you know, hit your pro shot and just laugh, you know? <laughs> like, Sorry, this is a complete joke. How can he miss it but still getting it? There were worlds between the two taps. Yeah, Florian, I don't, I don't know how I got it, to be honest. Let's go. JJ got an uncommon. That's what I mean. Like, it goes to show you that internet doesn't mean everything because you guys saw how late I was. And shout out to my guy, Tyler Gear, VV Chusk, if you're watching right now, my man. I mean, he lives in the same hometown as me, like literally blocks away. I could go walk to his house in five minutes from now. And he's got a newer phone than I do, and he still doesn't land these drops. So I don't know. It's a combination of, you know, trying to time it perfect. That's not a guarantee. Sometimes you can time it perfect and still strike out. And like you guys just saw, sometimes you can be late and still get it. The same way you can get rebounds and still get it. This is probably the latest I've ever been and still got one. <laughs> Let's see here. Let me... So you can see I was definitely not the quickest right there. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Unbelievable. Let's go. Ultra rare risky walrus. I'm going to retweet you, brother. I think Colton said he uh, tweeted me too. Let's go, Colton. Let's go. Like, I love these drops so much because I don't know if anyone's played college baseball or even not college, maybe high school sports. I know for me, I treated college like it was war. I had to in order because I wasn't the most talented, most skillful person. I couldn't, you know, throw the ball 98 miles an hour. I had to do what my strengths allowed me to do, meaning – I found out what my strengths were, what my weaknesses were, and I capitalized on my strengths. I treated each practice like it was war, like I was going to war. Each game the same way. And so it, it, it does a lot for these drops. Like I treat these drops the same way. I mean, <laughs> the night before I'm thinking about it, manifesting it, comes to the drop. And for a split moment, for about you know a minute, I would say, it brings me back to these college days. It brings me back to golf tournaments. You know, it's that same adrenaline rush. It's that same feeling. Feels like, you know, you get called in with bases loaded, maybe last inning. You're up by one. It's happened to me before. And you got to strike to do it out. <laughs> so it's like, you know, it brings me back to those exact moments. It feels amazing. Mr. Lognet with the ultra rare. Let's go. I'm just glad I'm able to help you guys out. You know, maybe the way I do these drops, it doesn't help every single person out. Maybe it doesn't even help the way you do the drop. Maybe you do it completely different. But I feel like at least being able to pick my mind about what I think about, it can help you guys. So <clears throat> let's go 1929. Now, these years, I don't know anything about special years, special mint numbers. So Milham, if you get something like this, especially a common, 
because the commons are probably going to be the most popular collectible. It probably looks the best too, in my opinion. Now, 1929 could be a huge iconic year for the Pilly Fantasy. Not too sure anything about that. So if I was you, if I was anybody who lands one of these drops or collectibles, you know, Google the date. If you have a date that could be, um, Pasmanian said streamer loot confirmed. <laughs> I don't think that's the case, my man. Um, because I've seen plenty of people who aren't influencers land the drops too. Um, like Colton right now. Colton is on fire. <laughs> Triple X, I know, man. And Triple X, I never uh, received your response. Are you on TikTok? Are you the one liking the pictures and stuff and videos? Because I get a, a notification saying like Triple X liked your picture or video. And never seen your username before. So I was just seeing if it was the same person or not. And if it is, appreciate you big time for, you know, going showing love on a different platform and coming back on YouTube. You know, appreciate you big time. But what I was saying about this is, Milham, if you get, say, common 1929, Google it. You know, Google Pilly Fantasy and that character with that year. Because you may find out that's like the first appearance of that character or something big. So, got a bomb, man. I haven't heard that in a while. Let's go. Man, remember the bombing gang? <laughs> four minute dub. Wow, I got the rebound on the four minutes. We have another four minute coming up any second now. 11 16, it'll be. I keep getting servers under heavy load error. Yeah, that message pops up for me as well, Ian. Now, a lot of times my phone goes right through it. I'll try to bring up an example. Because a lot of times that, that error will pop up for me now, but that still goes through. It used to be anytime I got that message, like the Disney drops is when it first started, I think. There'd be like no chance I would get the collectible. I can't find the video right now. But if you look at some of the videos I posted on YouTube and some of the other clips of when I win, you'll see that error pops up at the bottom, but it still goes through. So I think for me, the biggest key lately has been backing out with like about 20 seconds left and coming back in. I would start that process at like 30 seconds. Now, shout out to Taps because Taps tried that and completely ruined his drop a couple days ago. As you guys seen before, sometimes the speed of the minutes will just be going down so incredibly fast to where you do. You have to kind of back out and come back in maybe like a couple minutes before. That happened to me when there's like 20 minutes left. So it's risky the lower you wait. You know, as that timer gets closer to zero seconds left, the lower you wait, I think – the more you're playing with fire, the riskier it is, but also, you know, maybe the better chances it is lining up perfectly. For me, I like to do it with like 40, 30 seconds left and then another one with like 20 seconds left. For me, that works out well. You know, I would hate to see you guys do it and then it crashes because there's a possibility my phone could just crash. We've seen the VV app crash all the time. So if it crashes at that second, say goodbye to that drop, right? <laughs> Rare on the dub. Let's go. That's a low mint, too. Oh, man. I can't believe I got another one. I'm going to post this on uh, Instagram. <laughs> I don't know how I got this one. This is unbelievable. Man, I love these drops so much. Like, I look forward to them every night. <laughs> Let's see. Let's see. Yep. One thing people aren't even really thinking about too with the VVverse in our showrooms, we're going to have multiple layers. We're going to have, you know, a second story of our showroom, maybe a basement, maybe a garage we can add to our showroom. We're going to be able to add different exterior things, interior things, we haven't even seen anything just yet. I truly believe that. So when that happens, I'm probably going to clip this video <laughs> and be like, wow, I called it. But I definitely see that happening because as you can see, a lot of the showrooms are getting too congested. I mean, they want to make this like a digital, virtual, regular house. And so I think we're, we're going to be able to see maybe, you know, upgrades for our showroom and an extra layer on top, maybe a garage on the side, maybe even a basement. I know the people in our basements like me sleep in comics. I know we would love to add a basement. I think that would be awesome to add a little funny caveat for us. 
shout out to all the other creators that do you know their videos in the basements etc i caught it yesterday congrats jd ronnie you did ronnie you said you're gonna have a huge drop tomorrow i think it was ronnie wow Rob Remington connected via cable today and still got nothing. Don't even have buy now anymore. Wow, buy now. Okay, so Robbie, if the buy now isn't even showing up for you for the rebounds, I would say you probably you probably backed out and came back in. If you didn't, I mean that's happened to me before. I think yesterday even, like even if you stayed on the screen, there's a chance that the buy now just isn't even clickable. It just says sold out. Now that does happen sometimes. I mean you just have bad luck when that happens. Now. If it happened to you on the countdown timer, my advice would be try backing out with like 30 seconds left and coming back in. Maybe your timer was not in sync correctly because sometimes the timer is almost like too early and or too late. I should say, actually, when it's too late, the timer counts down to zero, but it's already late. So by the time by now, one pops up, it's probably already sold out. So that's why I like to make sure that my timer is in sync, not the band. <laughs> Oh, hard common 860. Now, if it was a common high mint, you might be able to get, you know, get that off right away for something cheap. I mean, for something valuable. Being a low mint, personally, I like to hold on to them just because I think they're going to be pretty valuable, especially being like an original own. But also, they're going to have a big demand. I would personally wait hard. Now, you can do whatever you want. You can sell it off right away if you need the gems. I'm not a financial advisor. But for me, an 860... It does that is that will have value. I think the value is going to be less right now than when it's going to be when all the cultures come to this drop, come to the VV app that can read the VV app in their language. When that happens, I think they would put a more premium on that low mint, especially a common. So Harv, you may have to hold on to this one for a while, months, but I think it would be worth it. For me personally, if that was me, I would just hold on to it. But again, you may want to do something different, and that's perfectly okay too. With VV, I've learned there's multiple ways to win. Just because I would do something and say if I won this way, you could do it the opposite and still, quote, unquote, win that way. So I missed the buy now button, and that definitely happens, Ronnie. There's been plenty of times. Now, one thing that you may have done that you don't realize, I've done this too. Now, say if we're at the original drop menu, right? This is the countdown uh, timer screen. Say if the countdown's up here somewhere. There would be no this box right here. There would just be a notify me and then this details box. And then the buy now would pop up like right in between there, right? You may have brought down the details box. I'm not sure if you did that. If you do bring down the details box, the buy now button will move slightly. That's something that I've learned. Wayne with the dub. Mikhail got an uncommon. Let's go. Turn the L to a dub. This is what I'm saying. Did I not? I mean, we all talked about blessing the chat. I mean, obviously, I want you guys to like the video. It helps the channel out grow, you know, big time. Helps that algorithm, you know, send it out to more people. But I'm not just saying that for that reason. I really feel like for whatever reason, you know, the good vibes, the energy, it tends to be when everybody likes the video, <laughs> the chat just does well for some reason. I don't know what the case is. I don't know if that's just coincidence. It probably is coincidence, but. You know, the universe is crazy. The fact that I even found VV as early as I did and I felt like it was a life-changing event really shows me that, you know, I think energy is real. I think it's a real thing that we can't see. I think, you know, being on that same vibration as the universe, I know it sounds crazy. Maybe it's not the case with these drops, but I think it has a lot to do with it. So shout out to everybody who's liked the video and God bless today. I mean, unbelievable. The chat did great today. Got one. Samuel Sanchez took a dub today. Amazing. Russell said button showed up in a different spot. Big L. Now, again, let me know, Russell, if you remember, if you click the details button, because I like I said, if you click that details drop down menu, it will slightly change the buy now button. I've had that problem for multiple drops before I figured out that was the case. I think it was from you guys that let me know. You know, when I, I wasn't sure if I should bring down the details or not in the beginning. And I kept doing the opposite. And you guys let me know when you bring down the details, you know, that buy now button is going to pop up in a slightly different spot. So I tried just to leave everything normal how it is. G got it uncommon. Let's go.
James Robertson said, got a rare. And since I've been one for 10, the last drops, that's rare. <laughs> and I'm glad you got one, James. That's a, I usually go like 0 for 8, 0 for 10. And then I'm thinking, wow, I'm definitely going to get one soon. I usually don't go longer than 0 for 8, 0 for 10. That's kind of like my longest cold streak. Had a little cold streak going 0 for 4, but got back in the game today. Let's go. <laughs> I'm probably just going to hold out. And uh, not sell this one unless the floor comes out at like crazy prices. It comes out 5k for some reason, then I'm probably gonna sell it. <laughs> but I have a feeling ultra rare It'll probably come out like just under 1000. I'm thinking, and I'm not gonna sell for that low. I mean, I think this this will be a huge drop long term. I mean, David, you knows his collecting, and he said how this is a very, very important big drop. They so big to the point where the company wanted to only release, you know, less than a hundred editions or less than a thousand editions of these. And David, you insisted, you know, for this first appearance drop, I think later series two, series three will probably have limited drops possibly. So, but for this one, there's going to be such a big demand. The first appearance of these, I think these are going to go crazy long-term. Maybe they don't go in the short term, but I think long-term I'm ready just to hold it. So, Yeah, uh, Wayne, I would I would agree. It's kind of annoying when they don't get delivered uh, before the market opens. If you did see, if you stay on that truck screen when you did land it, it will show up for the collectible blind boxes, which rarity you got. With the comics, it'll only show you your mint number. But with these blind boxes for the collectibles, on that drop screen of the truck screen, it will show you which rarity you got. So if you were able to see what you got, that's amazing. If you didn't check it, then it's unfortunate. You know, you won't see which rarity you got. Lenick got the ultra rare today. Let's go. Let's go, Lenick. Uh, do you keep going for rebound until sold out? Yeah, so Matthew Rhea. I think you can go for rebounds up until, you know, the button says sold out or up until the market opens. I've seen people get crazy amounts, like a 24-minute rebound, a 28-minute rebound. But I think if it's sold out and, you know, the buy now button's not clickable, then it's probably – too late then got one common flipper hole z brito i'm not sure about this one i'm gonna watch the market see how it kind of adjusts and see what happens here my original game plan if i didn't get a drop i was gonna try to at least buy one or two commons and i wanted to get at least get two commons so i could flip one common when it does blow up and kind of just hold one for the showroom finally got one if I only went for one common, I would probably wait until it blows up. I don't think there's going to be too much value on these right away. Now, I could be completely wrong. Maybe these come out way higher than I think. I have a feeling that these won't come out extremely high just because our culture is really not here just yet on VV. Once the VV app is able to be read in different languages, that's when I think a whole bunch of different countries pour in. You know, the communities and cultures that love this drop, love these types of drops, the genre. I think that's when they'll really put an emphasis on this. But until then, maybe it doesn't come out as high. Elton John, W with the timing gate. Let's go. I think a lot of people are upset that they see me kind of click it late. And I still got one. But again, guys, I think that just goes to show you it's not always about the internet. You know, it's not always about the location. Because if so, you know, I would have got it right away. <laughs> but I mean, also the fact that my buddy Tyler Gear, Vivi Chusk, he lives a block away from me. I always feel bad bringing him up because it's like he doesn't get the drops, but I feel like he's been blessed enough to be here with Vivi this early. You know, he has, he's got a great collection and he buys a lot in the market too. And he, he's a big supporter, you know, definitely someone who's active in the community. He's huge into the comic books. He actually bought me a comic book too. I usually have it up on my uh, desk here or a shelf, but took most of the comics off. Shout out to Comics and Crypto too. Donated a couple comics. I'll, I will put them back up there, but I like to change up the scenery a little bit here and there. Sooner the new system comes in, the better. Yeah, Robbie, I'm excited for the new system. Even though I love these drops so much, you know, I kind of not upset that it's leaving, but I'm just trying to take advantage every opportunity I get on these drops and make sure I go for the drops, make sure I enjoy the drops because we're not, we may never see these again. And so I think the new drops going to be the new drop system is going to be a little bit more fun for the family oriented vibe. It won't be as, you know, adrenaline rush, but. I think we can still have fun with it. I mean, it'll be like probably like a five minute window. If they make it a one minute window, 
then I think it could still have be a little bit of adrenaline. But we'll see what they do. I'm sure that's probably going to change. You know, duration may change from a five minute to a one minute, maybe to a ten minute, just to test things out. But <laughs> Fo sixty six. I should become a content creator. Q diggity, let's go. After two months of no luck, I got an ultra rare. So excited. I'm at work. Let's go. Man, that's an amazing feeling right there. Two months of no luck. You know how many people would have stopped trying? You kept going. You never gave up. You're even at work and you just made it happen. Ultra rare will probably be a few thousand dollars. Um, that's what I'm expecting. Not right away, though. That's why I don't want to sell mine right away. I don't think it's going to come out that high. Let's see if the market's open. Nope, market's still closed. Let me know, chat, if the market does open. Oh, I tried to flip a Wonder Woman yesterday. I lost 40 gems. How did you lose 40 gems on that, Harv? Because I think Wonder Woman started out at like 195, 200. I bought one at 220. And the reason why I bought one at 220 when the floor is like 195, it's not even a good mint number. But when you see a bunch of those private profiles with no picture, you know, a random username. I don't want to support that. So even though I could have bought one at like 190, 195, I try my best to, you know, set an example for people. If I went in there and just bought off random usernames, private, you know, that we think are fake accounts, etc., you know, that would just be supporting them. So, you know, to try to set an example for a lot of people, I, instead of paying, you know, the lowest price, 195, I could have easily, I decided to pay a little bit more, 220, I got it off a real person. I'd rather support that person. And now we see the floor price at like 260, 270. So if you believe in a collectible, you know, I think it's going to be, I think we can really set the trend and really start trying to support the real accounts out there. And just because the profile is private doesn't mean it's not a real person, of course. But based on the username, based on if it's got a profile picture or not, you can kind of tell if it's a real person or not. So me personally, being someone in the community here for a while with a decent following, I felt like I could, I could really set an example for people. So I'm sure there's going to be people, you know, try to buy off that lowest price, not care if it's off a bot or a username or a fake name, et cetera. But I just wanted to use my platform to really set an example, show people like it's okay, you know, to pay, you know, maybe 20 bucks more, et cetera, to make sure you're supporting the real people. I think that's going to be big. Hey, Getsy, appreciate you for tuning in today. I'll see you next time. Josh B saying these aren't going to sell well. So if anybody's kind of unsure, uncertain about if these will do well or not, you can definitely tune into the last AMA on my channel. I recorded it from the Comey Twitter spaces. And David, you got on there talked about how you know important, how valuable these will be globally. Now, I know you're probably coming on here, Josh, and you're not familiar with this drop, so you may not think it's important. But that's the education part that I think a lot of us need to do. A lot of us may not just be educated on it. So because of that, we just dismiss it, right? We have to realize that this is for a global audience. There's cultures on here that haven't even been able to read the VV app yet in their language. And when this happens, drops like these will be huge. So I would definitely research this drop or listen to the full AMA when David Yu talks about this drop. I did record it, so it's on one of my videos on my channel. If you're unsure or uneducated, I would definitely watch that before you make a decision. <laughs> White lists are still in effect. <laughs> I spammed and I backed out at 0. 0.12 seconds and I got an uncommon. Wow. I hope you mean like at like 12 seconds left you backed out because if you backed out at like 0. 0.12 seconds, that's pretty risky right there. But Vivi Crusader, amazing job locking one in. Fun under the sun. Smash that like button. Appreciate you big time. Refresh gate shooter. I think you got a point. I think I think we could make refresh gate a new gate. <laughs> Marty McFly. Congrats on the ultra rare giant. I got a comment myself. Let's go. I see you with the alien head, Marty McFly. I think the comment looks amazing. I was saying before the drop that the comment probably looks the best aesthetically. Um, I love that colorway. My two favorites were that common and the ultra rare. I like those two a lot. <laughs> be lit we're ultra rare eskimo bros <laughs> paul got a dub let's go and we do have a giveaway today as well so don't leave too early i will be doing a giveaway 
some little small, little some sums, little comic book extra. I thought it was gonna be a little bit bigger, but we just got one comic book today. No biggie. Oh wow! So Russell's, you didn't bring down the details, and it still came up in a lower spot. Interesting. I'll take a mental note of that. So when this happened, I was kind of doing like a hybrid. I wasn't reacting to the buy now popping up and I wasn't completely blindly guessing when the details, when I would press the details and when I wasn't sure what was happening, the buy now button was moving slightly for me. I was kind of doing that hybrid. I was kind of timing it blindly pressing, but not blindly. I was kind of also reacting at the same time. And I've kind of transitioned to completely predicting timing it without reacting. So I feel like if if you know that the, the buy now button is kind of moving on you, you may want to go towards a more like reaction style drop. Astro, I wouldn't say you're bugging out, but it's a risky move here. Do you think I'm bugging out for selling a Spider-Man 2099 and Goofy for 40 FA Robins for around 200 apiece? I would say you are risking it. I wouldn't say you're bugging out, but you're selling some pretty iconic collectibles. You're taking a big risk is what I'm saying. Now, risk can work out in your favor and then can also work out against you. That's why I say it's a risk instead of a bugging out because the risk is you're selling a secret rare Spider-Man, the first secret rare Marvel Mighties and the first ever secret rare from Disney, a first edition Disney and a first appearance secret rare Spider-Man from Marvel Mighty's. Two great pieces. Two great pieces I don't even have. F.A. Kid Robin is the one I'm, I think you're talking about. Now, there's two Robins on the app right now. Both F.A.'s. I think if it was a season one F.A. Robin, if you were able to stack that at a cheaper price, I would lean to say that's a better route than the Kid Robin F.A. I do think Kid Robin F.A. still has tons of room to grow. And I see kind of what your thought process is. You think a $200 FA Robin should probably at least double quicker than Goofy getting to 8K. You know, I see what you're, what you're trying to do there. And that's why I said you're not bugging. I would say more so it's a big risk. Because it's not like you're selling two non-important collectibles for that. You're selling some big pieces for that. So... My, if it was me, I would just hold. But if you want to get risky, I understand the risk there. I understand the strategy, what you're trying to do. FA Kid Robin could double quicker than, say, Goofy getting the 8K, quicker than Spider Man 2099 getting the 6K. I see where you're going for there. And I don't think it's a terrible play. There could be safer plays. But again, you know, sometimes you got to risk it for the biscuit, as they say, right? Just know, though, it is a risky move for sure. Most people would probably tell you to hold. I would hold personally. But again, I'm not saying don't do it. I've seen plenty of risky moves work out amazing. Got a rare. Let's go. Justin Torres, what up, JD? Have you added any more physical comics to the collection? Let me. I actually took these down, so I'll, I'll be able to kind of show them off a little bit. So these are the comics that, not that I bought, but shout out to Comics and Crypto. These were on my ledge that I just took off recently. It's from Comics and Crypto. Last time I went and showed my comics, I had a little bit of a spill, so I'm trying to be pretty careful with these. Another one from Comics and Crypto. Now, these are not graded, though, so I will probably get these graded eventually one day. And then the Spider-Man is for my guy, VV Chuss. You guys have probably seen this one on the VV app. My guy, Tyler Gear, right there. So I got a couple physical comics. I haven't bought any, though, myself just yet. I do probably, I will probably buy another one. I was going to head to the comic shop recently. I wanted to wait until the snow was all gone, though. Finally, it's gone now. So I'm going to make a trip to the comic store. Pick up a couple things for a couple people, see what's up there. I haven't even been there actually since it's open. I have one in my town, so I definitely wanted to check that out eventually. I'm gonna check real quick to see if the market opened back up. 
Market's still closed. I can't believe I got an old Chimera. Let's go, man. Wow. I think it's a kind of a low mint. I think it's a 1,000 mint at least. Let me double check here. It is a 1,423. Wow. So maybe... You know, if I do flip this, if I if you guys do see this in the marketplace, it's probably going to be pretty expensive. <laughs> now, the reason why I would put it expensive is just because if it does sell, I would just buy back the floor. But, you know, being an original owner, I, I love being the original owner of these. Exactly, dudes. I see these kind of a lot of people just flipping for more gems. A lot of people will probably undercut. I don't see these starting out too big. Because like I said, I don't think these will start out too big just because our culture really isn't about these just yet. I think the cultures that will be huge on these collectibles haven't even really been able to read the VV app in their language just yet. So for me, I'm going to try to long hold this one and probably pick up another common if it does end up getting pretty cheap. I'll probably wait on the common just because if things skyrocket, then that's probably great news for my ultra rare and I'll just sit tight with it. But if things end up dipping pretty hard, I'll pick up an extra common. Not an extra one, but like I'll pick up at least one common, maybe two, but at least one if things dip hard. Just so then when I do eventually sell that ultra rare, I can have that common to fall back on. Like I said, I am going to try to long hold this ultra rare. Play through games, bro. I like your mindset. You're right. We should just be grateful that we're early. Absolutely. I mean, here's the thing, right? We're all kind of upset when we don't get the drops that we really want, right? I mean, every new drop that comes out seems exciting. But it's also so important to appreciate the things that have already been dropped on VV. I know it's kind of hard to think about because it's kind of like that new shiny toy. <laughs> Not disease, but it's part of psychology. Anytime a new shiny toy comes out, we're all kind of like, ooh, you know, we want that. But it's so important to think about what has already dropped on VV and everything that we've been blessed to even experience already. We've had some of the most iconic, iconic superheroes, collectibles, comics drop on VV. And as much as we want the new drops that keep happening, I think it's so important to realize how early we are in this and how many amazing things are already on VV. Like we all keep hyping up the P word, right? Like web Pokemon. But I think we're all kind of just taking it for granted right now how much amazing IP is already on VV. Just take a look at the brands, you know. When you take a look at the brands on the Vivia, think about if you're showing this to your parents for the first time, showing showing friends walking down the street for the first time. You know, do you think they would be fran uh, fans of the brands that are on this Vivia? Oh. You can go to store tab, then go to the brands. And maybe when you're bored, just like look through how many amazing brands that are actually already on the Vivia. Batman, Captain America, Cartoon Network. If you guys have kids, if you guys are parents right now, think of your kids, Cartoon Network, Coca-Cola, like USPS. We have the federal government, <laughs> like unbelievable. DC, Deadpool, Disney, like we have the biggest brands in the world. DreamWorks, Ghostbusters, Givenchy, like just um, unbelievable. James Bond, Marvel. Like when you show this to people who are in the NFT space, we have the best brands in the world. We have the best NFTs in the world. They can't believe these are all NFTs. Superman, like it's unbelievable. This looks so professional. This looks so good. The quality is so amazing. Most people can't believe that they're real NFTs. How do we enter JD drop? Let's get it started. There's a lot of comments I just wanted to go to. Market's open. Oh, let's let's take a look, guys. Let's take a look. All right, so we got the common. I think it's going to go for pretty cheap. Yeah, okay, so 55 bucks just below retail. I think that's a steal. I may have to cop one right away. Ultra Rare is going for 450 There's only 71 in the building. <laughs> There's only one, 71 in the market, not in the building. <laughs> so it looks like... The market's been open for a little bit now. I should have came in a little bit earlier. Looks like people tried selling it for, like I said, around like 800, 900. That's probably what I would have tried to do right away. But, you know, I think the floor is really low in that ultra rare. 400 is the floor. We have the rare. 77 available is going for 199. We have the uncommon 
113 available going for 79. And the commons going for 54 stone. So this I may have to hurry up and get this set before it goes too crazy. Excuse me. I mean, if I can get one of these commons for under retail, that sounds like a pretty good steal to me. <laughs> All right, so I can't get one for under retail. Trying, I'm trying, I'm trying. Nope. Again, it is kind of hard just because I'm trying to also look and make sure it's a real person and then buy it. So obviously you're going to be a little bit slower. Floor is low. Ultra rare is cheap. Bots undercutting too quickly. Sell gems at 0.4 rate. <laughs> yeah, James Bond. That's We don't know for sure if that's happening. We all kind of have a feeling that's what's happening. And so for me, I just wanted to kind of set the example of making sure that you're buying off real people. You know, I'd rather support a real person as opposed to getting something for a few dollars cheaper and supporting, you know, all that kind of stuff that could be uh, possibly happening. So just something that I do personally. And we'll see how it recovers. But that's the market right now. If anyone's got questions, let me know. Marketplace is open. There's something I was going over right before that happened. How are we doing, Anna? Yeah, if your buy now button's still available, I would say it's time to just, you know, go look what the prices are in the market because I think they're all sold out now. I've barely started, so don't judge. I'm not sure what you're talking about, Dev. Fun on their son saying hodl. <laughs> Robin is uh is a sidekick. <laughs> James Brown saying, heck no, that trade is horrible. Yeah, you're risking a lot. I think the trade was the Spider-Man Secret, the Spider-Man 2099, and the Secret of Goofy for a whole bunch of F.A. Robins. Now, I think it's just too risky right there for me to pull the trigger on that one. J.D., why is Spider-Man Uncommon cheaper than the Common? Now, the reason why I think the Uncommon is cheaper than the Common for a few different reasons. We, we kind of saw a huge Common trend in all collectibles and comics. Now, I don't think it's a blanket statement for every single one that the common's better. I think it all depends on the comic. I think it all depends on the individual collectible. Now, there's a few reasons why I think that common is more valuable. We're more expensive right now than the uncommon. One, first of all, I think it's the pose. The pose of that common is the iconic Spider-Man pose. I think people just like that one better than, say, having the hanging down Spider-Man like on the cell phone taking the... Uh, selfie picture i feel like more people want the iconic original spider-man pose also that common is the same pose that's on the vv app meaning let me let me see if i can show you guys so like when you open the vv app that's the common spider-man pose right there so i think that also plays you know a big factor into that man my nose is terrible right now so a couple of things right there and also the fact that people are thinking that the common is the first minted now, I'm not too sure if that's always the case or not, but we see a huge run-up on a lot of the commons, more so than the uncommons. I think for comics, I mean, the reason why I like the common comic books is because for 90% of them, for majority of them, the common comic book is the one that there's a physical counterpart to with that same physical cover. And of course, there's some comics out there like the Secret Rare. I think the Miles Morales one has an actual cover in real life too. And some other ones out there. And for me personally, I've never been a comic collector in real life until Vivi. So I wanted to have some of these iconic legendary covers that are in the real world. If you Google Marvel Comics number one, like let me just show you. You, know, you Google Marvel Comics number one, say record sale. I think everybody understands, you know, how important <laughs> or how valuable this comic is. I think it's over a million dollars, like the lowest grade possibly. 
Let's see here. Okay, so the world's most valuable Marvel comic book sells for a record of 1.26 million. And this was in 2019. Um, which cover is this? <laughs> That's the common. So not every single common cover will be, you know, selling for 1.26 million, obviously, because there's 30,000 of them or however many there are. So in order to separate yourself from these common covers, to, in my opinion, it's all about the low mint. So, again, if you get a low mint comment on some of these covers, it's going to be iconic, I think. Especially because if you go for the Marvel Comics number one, they take the first 500. So, there's, so the VV team takes the first 500, right? So, in order to get a three-digit, less than 1,000 mint common Marvel Comics number one, it's actually more rare, more scarce than the secret rare covers. Think about that. That's something that most people can't really think about because they just see on the table, you know, they automatically assume, oh, there's a thousand or 999 common three digits, but there's way less than that. There's actually a more scarce amount of three digit common covers than there are secret rare covers. So just something to think about. It's the reason why I've been so big on a lot of these common comics. I mean, I think all rarities will do amazing, though. So don't get me wrong. I think secret rares will still do amazing. And the reason is because, you know, a true comic collector, they're going to go after that low mint common. They're going to go after that uncommon. They're going to go after the rare, the ultra rare, and they're going to finish the cover set and get the secret rare. I know it doesn't count as a set, but <clears throat> in the comic collector's eyes, they want every cover of that set. So, of course, they're going to pay premium for that secret rare as well. Do a stream from the comic shop. Hey, you know who else has been doing that? Shout out to the Omi homies, Max. Shout out to NFT Pirates. I saw him do one too. I think I may have to do that. Fun on the sun. Great idea. I may have to do that. I may have to even interview the comic, you know, owners and be like, you guys ever hear about Vivi? <laughs> Great idea, my man. I think I'm going to have to do that. Absolutely. Everyone starts somewhere. Oh, going back on what Dev said. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, guys, I would not be in the position I am today if I didn't go all in back in March. And you guys can look at my collection back in March. I think some of my earliest, earliest VV YouTube videos, I showed my collection. I probably only had maybe like five or eight collectibles. It was so close to stopping too. So close. What next NFT car will be coming? I hope Kit Knight Rider. Wow. I just watched a movie or at least a little bit of a part of a movie with my uh, dad the other night. And for the first time ever, he said, when are they going to make an NFT of this? I was like, what did I just hear? And he was talking about the uh, Captain America Harley Davidson bike you saw. I think it was Easy Rider. One of those movies, if anybody knows iconic, legendary movies, let me know if that's the name of the movie. But I, I was thinking, I was like, you know what, Dad? They're probably going to have a Harley Davidson license. They're probably going to have this iconic motorcycle from this movie. It's a legendary movie. I've never seen the full movie before. Are these 2.5% tax? I'm not sure on this one, Isaac Kerr. Ultra Rare Sub 400, super, super cheap. Uh, let's see here. Like I said, I thought it was going to come out pretty cheap right away just because, you know, our culture knows nothing about these. So there's no real people out there that I think are like must have these. But I think these are long holds. I think this is something to where. You know, if you if you if you're able to hold for like six months from now, three months from now, that's the thing. Most people won't want to hold that long with all these other drops coming. People are going to try to just keep it in the market, get the new drops. And then when the localization happens, boom, they're going to flood to the market, try to pick these up. And that's when I see the price really exploded on these. Let's go over ultra rare. There's 133 available going for 300. The rare there's 202 available going for 100. The uncommon 252 available going for 59. The common going for 46, but then 69. Oh, wait, I'm sorry, going for 47. See, for example, this is just what I would do. If I see all these quote unquote fake accounts, random names, profiles are private, I'm not going to support them. I'm not going to go and buy. You know, a floor a price that's forty-seven fifty. I'd rather come down here and go to a real person and pay a little bit extra. It's just what I would do. 
Now, I'm not saying, you know, just because they have a profile picture, it is a real person, or just because it's private, it is a fake person. But I try to go for the public profiles. Like I, like I just showed you that profile picture actually was private. You know, you may come down here, find, let's see here. What's the price of this one? So this is $69. I wouldn't mind supporting like a real person here. Let's give this person a follow. So stuff like that, I really wouldn't mind paying an extra, you know, 10, 10, 15 bucks if I'd rather support a real person. Yeah, great idea right there. I try to stick to common Silver Age comics priority wise. Then I go back to try to double up on variants. Smart move, Austin. Yeah, I think that's a safe bet for sure. What's going on, Super Duper Hank? How are we doing, fam? Snag the 1457 common for 52 bucks. Let's go. I think that's a great steal right there. Anything below retail. I mean, we're going to see, guys. The common DeLorean was under retail for the longest time. $13 even. And then finally, prices started to pick up. Now it's like 100 bucks. So I think kind of the same situation here. If we can wait months on this one, that's what I'm going to do. I am thinking to buy some Spider-Man figures, the first Marvel NFT. You think now is a good price? I know not financial advice. I think that collectible set is iconic. I think any rarity will do amazing. I do have the full set for disclosure. I have the secret rare down to the common. I used to have 10 commons at one point. I stacked up on those big time when they were like 30, 40 bucks. I was like, all right, the first ever Marvel NFT. I don't care if it's a common or not. No way it's staying at $30. So I, I did. Most people slept on them. I stacked up 10 of them. I was hoping I could hold them long term. But then a little collectible called Walt Disney came out. <laughs> and I was scrambling. I was like, oh, my gosh. Don't want to deplete all of these. I had like 30 Marvel Mighty FA Captain Americas too. Didn't want to deplete them, but had to deplete almost all of them as well. <laughs> but that's where we get those duplicates because we know they're going to run up in price or we think they will. And obviously we would like to hold them to the very peak, but maybe something else comes out that's a you know, blue chip iconic drop. Imagine if I you know just held on to the Marvel Mighties and was like, I love these. I have 30 of them, never selling. And then I passed on Walt Disney at 3K. Woo. So I think it's important to not chase collectibles, but kind of know that fine line difference of not chasing things, but maybe grabbing something before it gets out of reach. There is a fine line there and you have to really do some soul searching and deep thinking and you could be wrong. I felt like when Walt Disney was at 3.6 K after it was just 2.9, I felt like I was chasing, but at the same time I knew I was getting this collectible before it runs away. And luckily, I was right in that decision. It's probably one of my best moves I've ever made so far on DV. Yeah, absolutely. I think other cultures definitely will have enough money to pay a premium for these. These are huge in other cultures. I mean, that's the reason why they only make a limited amount of physical editions of these. I should just I suggest everybody go watch that AMA from David Yu and the Komi team because David Yu talks about this collectible drought specifically how important it is, how valuable it is for these other cultures that can't even read the VV app in their language yet. Guys, think of how important that is. If you're on the VV app right now and they drop Batman, Superman, Spider-Man, but in a different language than you can read and speak, you may not be getting all these collectibles, even if you see it's your favorite, right? Because you can't read the app. <laughs> so once you're able to read the app, I think that's when people are going to become a lot more familiar. A lot, They're going to feel a lot safer with the app. So these are really big in Taiwan. Absolutely, dudes. And that's what I mean. I think that's part of, you know, some of these different cultures, communities, different countries. Once they really start adopting the VV app in the language that they can read and speak in, I see these being huge. I think this is just another opportunity that we all thought could be a good stackable situation. This is kind of the psychology, too. We all are witnessing it in live time. We see the you know, comments come out under retail for the first time in a while. Most people won't buy them because of that reason. Most people are looking at it and say, that's so cheap. It's not valuable. I don't want it. But then those same people may come back to that same collectible saying three to six months from now, and it's not under retail anymore for $55. It may be $300. 
And so the people that stack them sat on them are in a great position. Now, I'm not telling you guys to stack all these. Everybody's in a different situation. I don't have the amount of gems right now to be able to stack these and hold on to them. So I'm only going to get maybe another common, maybe two commons. But I'm going to sit on that ultra rare until I think a lot more cultures start coming to the app. Marvel Comic 1 worth going in on right now. Let me bring up the price of that comic. Personally, my view on the first of things, like that first set Batman, the first comic book ever, the first stamps ever, the first of things, I think will always continuously go up in value. Not financial advice, but some things will kind of have like a plateau. Some things may dip. When you have the first of things like this that are legendary, I think it's very, very safe. Marvel Comics number one, the common is up at 404. It sounds expensive because, I mean, let me just go over the history of this one. Because most people tuning in right now, they may not know. And I think it could help out in the future of drops. When Marvel Comics number one, the same one that's now $400 floor for the common, when this got released, it was the first comic on the app, I think $6.99 for the retail. As soon as the market opened, people were reselling this for $4, $3, even $2. Literally just getting rid of it. They didn't want it. People are looking at it like, what is happening? It just came out $7 and people are selling it for half the price. What's going on? Some people stacked up on them. Some people didn't. You know, and then now fast forward six months from them, Marvel Comics number one, the same one that was being resold for $3. Is now $415. That's just the common. The uncommon's at $475. The rare is at $1K. The ultra rare is at $2.7K. And the seeker rare is at $69.6K. So just goes to show you that just because whatever the price is right away in the market will not determine what its future price is. A lot of times if things come out way cheaper than you expect, you're looking at it like what is happening and it kind of makes you not enticed to buy it. Those are 10, those tend to be, you know, the opportunities, the accumulation periods that people take advantage of. I guarantee you that there's going to be some people that stack the commons right now for less than retail. And I guarantee you they won't stay less than retail for a long time. So as we see, it's back up to at least $60. We got, hey, we see a real person. So Sam Ellis, he's selling one right now for 65 So like I'm much more inclined if I wanted to buy one from a Sam Ellis because we know him in the community. I'd rather pay him 65 He probably got it on the drop for $60. Um, or maybe he picked up one for even cheaper maybe. Not too sure, but maybe he just wasn't, doesn't want this collectible right now. Maybe he thinks he's going to dip, dip even further. But just for example, I'd rather pay the 65 bucks to a Sam Ellis, someone that I know is a real person, as opposed to, you know, giving it off to a random username. Just cop two commons below retail. I agree, Ken Penguin. A lot of people are stacking the commons. Once vault comic display happens, all the comics will move. And I agree, Austin. And not only just the showrooms. I mean, we know that it's coming soon where we're going to be able to show off these comics in our showroom. Maybe put them in a case. At least hang, up, hang them up on the wall. But also being able to display them on our profile. Like, think about game-changing that is. Look at the prices of the comics. And we can't even put them on our profile. Like, this is my profile here. And it's all collectibles. I cannot wait until we can actually show off some of these comics. I definitely see that exploding the comics when that happens. Yes, absolutely. And also not only just on the walls, but I want to have like a case, maybe some of my like top five comics, you know, I'll be able to get an accessory case for them that shows off the, the mint number on them. That's what I really want. I can't wait for that. So it looks like somebody did buy the Sam Ellis collectible. Shout out to Sam. 
if he's watching, tuning in. Looks like floor is 56, but it jumps right up to 63. Maybe it's back down right below retail. Oh, okay, list was a 40. Okay, I was saying the list price of these were 60. Thanks for correcting me there, Montage. So they are still above retail then, a tiny bit. I was thinking that retail was 60 on these. So retail was $40. That makes more sense then. You know, if you sell for 65, that's a little come up right there, a little $25 come up. And the thing is, like, you can put those gems to use into something else, right? I was kind of just bringing that up just to give an example of I'd rather support someone who I know is a real person than maybe pay five, 10 bucks cheaper and give it to a random, no name, possibly fake account. So I agree, Melissa. Melissa says, I honestly believe the common is the most prettiest of the set. Love the purple and design. I agree. I was saying that big before they even drop. Huge fan of the common, the way it looks. I mean, I think it looks amazing aesthetic wise. And I think that's part of the genius of what VV does. We've seen time after time where the VV team makes the most popular character, the common. I think that's why they probably did it with this one as well. So it's definitely good to see that. Like I am going to buy a common right now. I did just buy a common off a real person. Shout out to you if that was you. Paid a little extra, but again, I'd rather support a real person in this. Yeah, I agree. One thing that you can look at too is how many are delivered. This is something I go over usually, but again, I'm going to go over how you can look at, how you can kind of judge in the market to see if you think prices are going to dip or not. So I'm going to start at the very beginning. All right, this is the store tab. If you want to check to see if like you think things bottomed, bottomed out or not in the market, you can go into the drop that just happened, You know, go into one of the collectibles, and when you scroll down into the details is where you can find how many additions are left to still be delivered. Now, it's not focusing up for me right now, but right where it says additions, you can see there's still 5,032 of 11,888 remaining of the commons to be delivered. So still a pretty decent amount, a little less than half, I would say. The uncommon has 3,717 of 8,888 remaining. So again, a little less than half still have to be put out in the market. Will still have to get delivered to people's accounts. And then typically those people will put it in the market for sale. So I wouldn't be surprised if things do dip a little bit more. We have for the rare 2,493 of 5,888 remaining. So again, a little bit less than half. This is ultra rare. We have 1,574 of 3,888 remaining. Now, we don't have any details of what's dropping next just yet, but I think next week it's going to be full of comics. And then I would assume maybe another collectible drop next weekend. But I think this week is going to be geared mostly all comic drops. So we'll see how that works with the market. I have a feeling if it is just all comics that drop this week, we could kind of see maybe a little bit of a boom in the market prices, depending on what that comic is that drops, maybe depending on what this weekend collectible drop is as well. All right, now to the fun part. We got another giveaway. Let's go. I'm going to make a whole new list, so it may take some time, guys. Actually, no, I'm going to leave the list as it is. No, I, I can't do that because I won't know who's here, who's not. All right, guys, if you want to get entered in the giveaway today, Write your YouTube username. So, for example, don't give me your VV username. Give me your YouTube username. If Montage wanted to get entered in the giveaway, he would just write Montage. If Block Max wants to get entered in the giveaway, just write Block Max in the live chat. So you guys can definitely start that. I will start adding in the names for today's giveaway. If you guys missed out on the VV drop, you may get lucky, and you may get a JD drop. Got me Mao. <laughs> We got dubs. Yeah, it's all Doctor Strange. Let's go. My guy's due for a big win. Also, we had Rickard Broma send me the Omi in the VV app. And now we're just waiting on Joshua Tocedo to get back from work. I think he said he's going to be out, out at work. 
till Monday. So hopefully Monday he can join the chat. He hasn't answered me back on Twitter. But I will be able to send him the 10K Omi. Rickard Broma, shout out to you, my man. Send it through the VV app. Wasn't sure if we were going to be able to have him send it through the Forex, et cetera, with the gas fees now and everything. Just made a lot more sense to send it through the VV app. My guy, Rickard Broma, you can definitely follow him on Instagram. You know, big supporter of the channel, sponsor. You know, sponsored a lot of these giveaways. And I didn't know who he was at first, so I was kind of just curious as to why he you know, was giving back so much. But he let me know that he found VV Akomi, thanks to all of us. And, you know, it's helped him out tremendously. He believes in a big time. I believe he has kids and wants to set them up for life as well in the future. And he just wants to give back to some of the OGs that – I've really helped him along the way, help him find it. So once I heard that, I realized, wow, this is actually amazing. You know, it's always great to hear stories like that because you never know whose life you're going to change, right? Got Austin in here, play through games. Good fans. Also, guys, if you guys you know are into some NFT music, you know maybe some new artists that you haven't heard of or anything like that, go follow Doctor Strange on his Twitter. You can find his Open C as well, probably through his Twitter page, Instagram page. Portfolio. <laughs> VV drops it. Let's go. I'm guessing that means that you want to get entered in here. I'll write you in here. Montage. As soon as I get done writing all these names in, I will do the giveaway. So make sure if you guys are tuning in for the giveaway, you stay local. Because if I call your name and you aren't here, you know what that means. We're going to have a re-roll gate. <laughs> Hopefully, we don't have too many re-rolls today. Um, Kishu. Dave Nelson. Then we got Dev. Dev. I think I got Jamie C already. Jamie's trying to enter twice. <laughs> Jamie wants some extra lottery tickets for this giveaway. We got Professor Vivi. I like that username, Justin Torres. How we doing, brother? Atsu Machu. <laughs> and I, I'm kind of upset that the ultra rare isn't crazy high, but I kind of expected that as well. Anytime I just land any of these drops, if it's a common ultra rare, secret rare, it doesn't even matter. Just the fact that I win, <laughs> that's the part that I love. So. Like I said, I kind of expected the ultra rare to not do great. I thought I was going to be able to maybe, if I was like the first few in the in the lobby in the market, maybe get it off close to like eight nine hundred, and then buy it back low. But like I said, I probably wouldn't have done that anyway. I would have just held. But we got Ivy in the building. Shout out to you, Ivy. We got Paul. Shout out to Paul. Renzo Zeta. Renzo Zeta. better chance winning here than vivi hey <laughs> for now absolutely probably always actually i don't think i'm gonna blow up and have 1.9 million active monthly users on my channel just yet <laughs> meet a crypto news i got a feeling someone new is gonna win it today and it's not gonna be a re-roll gate just one one spin one win What's the deal? <laughs> Finster. Finster 23. Let's get it. Paul, is this your second account, Paul? I'm trying to write in there, Robert. <laughs> Got it, dog. LA Omi homies, let's go. The 
because I gotta love when new people join the chat. They join the live stream and they see an enter or a giveaway going on. Like, how do I enter? Put me in there. So Pat Cassidy, all you gotta do is put your YouTube name in. I'm gonna write you in there. So you don't have to do anything. Pat Cassidy. Maverick is gonna be in. I'm gonna write Maverick. Again, guys, if you're just tuning in, just write your username for YouTube. Don't write in your VV username. The Domer. 37 entries. Let's go. Sam J East. I'm going to write J East music. Bumped above 300 now. Nice to know. Nice to know. I think, like I said, it's going to dip down low. People are going to find out when that bottom is, probably when they all get delivered. And then I think it's going to slowly rise. I could see it probably getting up to like five, 600. I don't see it going past 1,000 right now until we start seeing more of that culture come into VV. I don't really see it. Right now it's kind of on just speculation. People probably buying it in hopes to flip later. Those are... Oh, let's go. Punch sent me a comment. So we got two giveaways then. Let's go. Shout out to Punch. My notifications aren't loading right now, so it may take a little bit. Pat Cassidy, I got you in there. Wonder Woman running a bit. Good to see that happen. I see Wonder Woman getting up to 500 easy. The non-FA Wonder Woman. Let's go, Daredevil. Let's go, Punch. So we got another giveaway today as well. I'll probably do this one first. Yeah, I'll do this one first. I'm going to shout out Punch's uh, Instagram. Also, Punch, you know, I will consider you a sponsor of the channel. You gave, you know, you've given me a ton of giveaways to use. You've actually won a few giveaways as well. So that's always good to have. Usually when the winner wins, they, they'll donate something like a comic or something like that. So this is Punch's Instagram. Let's see here. Focus up for me so we get some love on Punch. If you can't see it, I'll read it out. Punch approved. P U N C H A P P R O V E D. Punch approved. Dreamy Kiwi. I'm going to go over the market on some other collectibles. Winnie Patham. I'm just going to write Winnie Patham. That makes sense. Sniper. Sniper. Hopefully you win today, my man. I think you won a couple days ago, but jumped out of the building, so I don't think you were able to win that. We are both here watching. <laughs> Frank Light. Light. Frank Light. Thunderstorm, almost getting there, almost done, almost done, fam. I'm going to write Spyros. All right, we got 47, 46 people in the live giveaway for this first one. Oh, we got some more. Theo and then Lee Wong, and then that'll be it for this first one. Theo, Lee Wong. All right. So, again, guys, this first giveaway is from Punch. It's going to be a Daredevil comic. Shout out to all the contestants, 48 of them. Oh, what a bad spin. We'll still count it, though, because it did spin. VV Drop. Is VV Drop in the building? The way is from Punch. It's going to be a Daredevil comic. Shout out to all the contestants, 48 of them. Oh, what a bad spin. <laughs> We'll still count it, though, because it did spin. VV Drop. Is VV Drop in the building? Let's hope we get a better spin for the next one. Let's go, VV Drop in the building. We got another giveaway happening. Definitely do one more, because that spin wasn't a good one. VV Drop wins the JD Drop Classic. We got another one happening. Oh, you're right. How wild is that? <laughs> I didn't even think about that. I still got to write for this next one, Ishbak Rubio. 
last entrance entry, Ishbak Rubio. Vivi drop wins a JD drop. How wild is that? Let's go. All right, Vivi drop. What is your Vivi username? So I can send you this comment. Also, go follow uh, Punch Approved on IG. You know, he's a sponsor of the giveaway, so it's always good to show, show him some love. Vivi drop Sona. Awesome. So you, is your profile picture a board ape? Looks like a mutant ape. Shout out to the, all the board ape holders out there. Looks like Sonam. Just making sure that is your profile picture. Ah, it's pronounced Ishbak. Got you. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, brother. Let's go. Holder of one of the mutant apes. Solid profile picture, brother. Shout out to all the board ape holders out there. Definitely got to ask, VV Drop, what is your opinion from the board apes that you hold and all the VV NFTs? I'd like to hear some pros, some cons, maybe some things that you like about VV better, maybe some things that you like about the board apes better. Always great to hear some, you know, feedback from some of those holders. Shout out to you guys. Let's go. So now, shout out to you, brother. Where can I send you a comic? Hey, what's good, G? So, G, you can, you know, if, if it's not focused up for me, let me try to focus this up a little bit better. There we go. All right, so you can definitely follow me on Twitter, johnnydunn777, Instagram, johnnydunn7, and just shoot me a DM. Um, you can definitely link up with me that way. Um, I can show my QR code too on here, but I, I don't feel like, I feel like when I do that, it's always a possibility of so many people sending me collectibles at once, and then I won't be able to like organize it. So I try not to do that. Um, so G, if you want to, you know, link up with me on Twitter, Instagram, just shoot me a DM and let me know which comic that you want to send me, and that way I can write it down and we can get a prayer for the next giveaway. I will be doing one more giveaway right now. One more giveaway. This is going to be an incredible Hulk. Just a little common, a little common action here. Oh, Daredevil successfully sent. Okay, sweet. Let me go back to my comics now. Let me just bring up this one. Hopefully, we get a better spin. I feel like that spin kind of stunk. It's always due for a couple of duds, but at least it did spin the whole way. Sometimes it doesn't. When it doesn't, I like to do a respin. Let's go. Got my comic up here. All right, let's see here. All right, guys, the second and final giveaway today. Shout out to all the contestants. 49 people entered in the giveaway. Kind of getting tough out here, but. Oh, my God. Terrible spin. All right, that one doesn't count. Unfortunate for whoever wins this one. I'll show you guys what this spin looked like. This is a no spin. And I'll show you guys why. Sometimes when I spin it, you know, it just like kind of lags out and craps out like that. So, Paul, you were close, but you did not win it. <laughs> Let's try it. Uh, the fake winner, unfortunately, was Lorenzo Zeta. Unfortunate. <laughs> So hopefully you can win this one. Let's hope this spin works out this time. There we go. Great spin. Sometimes it gets lagged out. Who is the lucky winner? And it is... Oh, almost LA... Almost LA Omi homies, but it's Ekaj. E-K-A-J. E-K-A-J. See, that's how it's supposed to spin. Who is the it is oh, almost LA only, almost LA only, but it's EKAJ. Is EKAJ here? Works out this time. There we go. Great spin. Sometimes it gets lagged out. Let's go. 
I wasn't sure if you were here. Let's go. Oh, Lorenza F. He is so close. So, Lorenza, I would say, you know, you did win that one. But, like I said, it was a crappy spin. For some reason, it kind of just lagged. So, better luck next time. Um, we did have the full spin finally for that second spin. So, that's why I want to give it to EKAJ. Change your display to happy troll now. <laughs> yeah, for real. <laughs> EKAJ. Um Shout out to you. What is your VV username? <laughs> yeah, so unfortunate. I probably shouldn't even mention your name to get you that, that fake hype. Um, but yeah, EKAG or EKAJ. Oh, okay, nice. So it's your user YouTube username and your VV username. That works out perfect. E K A J is your profile picture. I can't even tell what your profile picture is, but you do have one, right? E K A J. It's like a profile picture. I can't, it's not a real clear one. I can't really tell. I just want to make sure. It's a moon. Okay. Yeah. I think that's it. Yep. I couldn't tell it was a moon. I like the profile picture then even better now that it's a moon. You already know where we're headed. <laughs> the moon is just a pit stop. Let's go. Shout out to EKAG. Shout out to all the contestants, all the winners. Let's take a look to see what this is going for in the market. What this last drop's going for in the market. So we got the common kind of moving up a little bit. It's going for $60 right now. $61. Again, this looks amazing. It's going to be one of the big ones, I think. I probably should try to get a second one, but sticking with just one for now. Now we have the uncommon. I'm not even going to try to pronounce these names because I'm just going to butcher them so bad. So the uncommon. We have 369 available going for $67. Then we have the rare, which is, I, I don't see it. There it is, the rare. We have 302 available going for 119 Then we have the ultra rare, 205 available going for 320 So pretty low in the ultra rare right now, 310 even. When Walt 1 million, let's go, Willow. I can't wait for Walt to be 1 million. I definitely see it going there. I mean, this is Walt Disney. How many more Disney drops do you think we're going to have? A lot. And every one I think is should or is going to push up Walt even more. Because this is the first appearance of Walt Disney. One who started it all. And the first appearance of Mickey Mouse. In one collectible. In all gold. Amazing. Thoughts on Supergirl with 7,500 mints over Wonder Woman with 10,000 mints. So, Moody, mint-wise, edition-wise, scarcity-wise, Supergirl gets the uh, edge there. But Wonder Woman is actually an iconic superhero worldwide. One of the top, top, I would say probably top five even. Easy top 10 superheroes. So, the popularity of Wonder Woman, I think, will outweigh the scarcity of Supergirl. So, I see Wonder Woman probably being more valuable. Just because of that reason. J.O. says, J.D., you look just like me, just with more hair and a beard. <laughs> That's amazing. I feel like I've kind of looked like a lot of people for some reason. I mean, ever since even a young age, I've always seen people that kind of look similar to me. Um, always strange. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know why. Thank you so much. I've been watching for almost about a month on every drop day. Hey, let's go. Shout out to you for finally landing a J.D. drop. Glad to see that happen. What is going on with this drop? These, these prices are undervalued when you pay $40 and you get back 10 to $20 asking. Yeah, so Strauga, great question. Uh, very valid question as well. Sometimes we see with drops, if it's not a big iconic superhero like Batman, Superman, Spider-Man, Mickey Mouse, Disney, a lot of times that the resell value will be kind of low at first. People just try to get it off real quick, you know, just get some quick gems. And that's okay, too, if that's what you want to do. But 
I kind of think back to when a lot of these collectibles got dropped in the early days. Cheap. DeLorean went all the way down. A common DeLorean went undervalued. Under retail for $13. And those people that stacked up with them and held for a few months are now sitting pretty because now the floor is like $90, $100. Now, I think the same thing will happen with this one. Again, this is not a huge iconic IP drop for most cultures that are on the app right now, I feel like. So we don't really know much about this drop, about these collectibles, about this IP. So a lot of us, I think, just aren't into it as much as using this as a way to stack gems. But I think the people who hold these, until we see more countries, more communities, more cultures come onto the VV app, that can actually read the app in their language, that's when I start to see this really taken off. Also, like on the first day of drops, things, you know, it, it goes two different ways. Sometimes right away when the drop happens, there's hype. There's It's kind of overvalued. And a lot of times, too, on the opposite end, when a non-big IP drops happen like this, it gets undervalued the first couple of days because most people just want to use it as gems. But then as the days start to go on, people start to realize that this could be huge and they stack up on it later. So always interesting to see how things work out. Invisible Friends, Twitter, 400K in the house. How's it hanging? <laughs> if you know what I mean. Going well, my man. Going well. Can't complain. Just got the drop again today. So feeling pretty high on life right now. I love the feeling of getting the drops. Even if it's not coming out most expensive, <laughs> I think just being able to win these days, you know, against all the B words out there, just a high demand. I mean, we have 1.9 million active monthly users now. So that's unbelievable. Just the fact that you can win these drops, <laughs> it gives me all the great feeling in the world right there. Thoughts on Steamboat Willie really drop from 10K? I think it should easily get back up to 10K, Pat. Now, maybe it keeps on dipping if we see a huge comic drop or something huge that happens. Maybe it doesn't, you know, pump back up. But I think when the, the next market that pumps, the next pump in the market, I easily see Steamboat Willie really getting to 10K again. My collectibles in the building. Shout out to you, my brother. My collectible says, wait a few days. These should be even cheaper and they'll be good pickup for the long term, in my opinion. I agree. I agree with this. Now, he's probably thinking, you know, as we see more and more comic drops happen, as they get hyped up, we don't know exactly what's dropping. It could be a bigger first appearance of a comic. If that happens, I see these definitely going lower, uh, not lower, <laughs> lower the next few days. And if that happens, these could be potentially a great way to stack. Now, the problem with that is you're going to have to be able to stack them and have gems left over for the new drops. So that's kind of the balance right there. But I think if you can manage that balance, these will be great long term. I got doubles of all. Hey, smart man. Doubles are crucial. I would not have been able to build my collection to what it is today if I didn't stack up on duplicate collectibles early. Shout out to Superman for understanding that doubles are crucial. You know, if you can get doubles, triples, even even more at some point, but whatever you can afford. You know, when you're able to get, let's reverse it. Say you only get one collectible of your favorite. Let's reverse time and say it was F.A. Joker, right? You were only able to get one for $80 when it dropped, right? It's amazing. Now let's fast forward time. Joker's at 1.4K. Say it gets to 10K. That's amazing. You have a $10,000 collectible now. But at the same time, you're kind of stuck. I mean that by is in the sense that if FA Joker is one of your favorite collectibles, or if you just like that one a lot, when it gets to 10K and you only have that one, you know, what do you do? It's worth $10,000, but do you sell it and then never see it again? So you're in a tough position. When you get doubles, when you get duplicates, when you get three or four even more, I was able to grab a bunch of those FA Jokers for the retail price of $80. And then when that collectible got up to, say, $1,000, I can let one go. And you still have at least one for your collection. And then you can use those gems to profit on the next one. So I think getting those duplicates and doubles of your favorite collectibles or collectibles that you think are going to go up in value big time, I think it's crucial. absolutely ivy hit the nail on the head with this one ivy was saying waiting to get a drop and then actually getting it is a great dopamine boost <laughs> absolutely absolutely the fact that the lenticular mickey is a first edition but steamboat isn't is a shame 
Well, I understand the thinking of that because you think of a new, you know, series could be a first edition of that series, but they've stated before, if you watch any of the latest AMAs, I think David's done a good job of talking about this recently. The first editions are now reserved for artistic work, artwork, artistic design, stuff like that. So the lenticular cards being artwork on the cards is a first edition. And any kind of artwork we see from future artists, they'll be first editions, not first appearances. And the FAs are going to be reserved for the actual collectible, the actual, you know, person or superhero, et cetera. So we're going to see in the future, you know, FA, first first appearance of these 3D collectibles of Goofy, of Donald Duck, of Minnie. But these are first editions of those characters. So a little bit of a difference there. I think Steamboat Willie is such an iconic character to where it really doesn't need a first edition tag to have value. Would it help it? Sure. But being such an iconic character and the first appearance of Mickey in real life, something like Steamboat really, I don't think necessarily will need a first appearance, first edition to have value. <laughs> I almost threw up twice before the Steamboat drop. Ended up getting ultra rare, straight nerves. Wow. Shout out to you, Pat Cassidy. I mean, absolutely. If you got that ultra rare Steamboat on the drop, that's amazing right there. It's probably going to go down as one of your best drops. Um, absolutely amazing anytime you can get a disney drop too i mean yeah absolutely like this person just said too straga all disney entities will go to the moon anytime you get a disney first edition first appearance anything disney this early i think is a safe bet i mean disney's a 300 billion dollar industry i think 300 billion dollar company i should say and you know sky's the limit for disney collectibles i truly believe that but, all right, guys, I'm going to be heading off today. Shout out to all the winners of the VV drop. Shout out to all the winners of the JD drop. Definitely going to have more comics, you know, more giveaways uh, coming soon this week. I'm going to be live streaming every drop this week. So definitely going to be fun to see what they release. Stay tuned to the Twitter updates. VV team is going to tweet out what the next comic drop is going to be. You know, YouTube as well. I try to make sure all the posts come out on YouTube and create a post there. And as well as Instagram. Yeah, I'm, I am going to try to complete this set punch. <laughs> so you guys may see me in a little bit with my 50th set. Let's go. Absolutely. I probably will try to complete this one for my 50th. But we'll see what drops next. Appreciate you guys big time for tuning in today. I'll catch you guys on the next live stream. It's your boy, Johnny Dot. We out, y'all.